Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt, your bi-weekly horror hotfix brought to you by GDQ. Uh, I'm your host, Dicis, and uh, we're going to be having a fun game for you tonight. Uh, before I do get into that, though, I do just want to say that Unapologetically Black and Fast is coming up from February 11th to the 12th. Uh, it is a series of runs celebrating black excellence and speedrunning coming up this month. Uh, you can use the command exclamation mark UBAF in Twitch chat to find out more information. All right, though, I hope you're all doing good today and I hope you're all doing well. Uh, today, I kind of wanted to go for a bit of an interesting run. Uh, you know, with the world of horror, there's a lot of fun games out there, but also there's a lot of fun horror parodies out there, I suppose, or horror adjacent games. Uh, this is a weird territory because every now and again you have hit franchises that they want to explore the world of horror and they're not quite sure how to do that, or they just want to take a stab at it in a way. Uh, I guess what I'm saying here is that if you don't know, there exists a game on the PS3 uh, in the Yakuza franchise, a franchise that is, you know, very much not horror, uh, but it's entirely just them dealing with a zombie outbreak, and it's a very long run, it's very interesting, so I thought we need to bring this to you. Uh, anyway, we're going to take a look at that with a run of Yakuza Dead Souls with Fruit. Take it away. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, this is, as Heck was saying, a very interesting run in it being very, very different. Uh, the Dead Souls that you know, or the Yakuza that you know, is only going to marginally apply here. Um, but thankfully, I am not taking this on alone. I have a very, very, very good co-commentator with me who has joined me in this arduous journey of routing and running Yakuza Dead Souls, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Yeah, not a problem. Hi, I'm Street Bad Guy. I am uh, Froob's partner in crime for Dead Souls, and I seem to have an affinity for janky horror games, so, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So, yeah, I guess we'll get going, because this run is... This run is actually... Uh, it used to be three hours long. Uh, in the last, like month or so we've got it down to finally sub 240 so we've actually figured out a lot of like really cool skips and stuff uh thanks to some of the runners of dead souls difficulty uh which as you can see it says playing this difficult may level maybe has your health i've done it once it's uh it's really nasty uh but for this run we'll be doing it on easy get ready for an experience uh if you're already on time then we are going to begin in three two one go so I guess we should start off by saying what Yak as a Dead Souls is, because you're probably wondering what a Yak as a game is doing on speedruns from the crypt. Uh, if I said that this game is a third person zombie shooter, you might be surprised. <laughs> as Street Bad Guy knows, this game uh, this game struggles at times, unfortunately, with uh, the constraints of the PS3. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially with random frame drops just in random areas and because of some enemies. And there's a, especially a certain auto-scroller-esque part later that will definitely show uh, the struggles. I, I, if, if for those of you are wondering, uh, you're going to see me pan the camera here. Panning the camera here is to despawn civilians. This is a thing that happens in all the PS3 Yakuza games. Uh, this is Kamaki, you might recognize if you played in the Yakuza games. He's usually your move tutor. Uh, in this game, I actually think he's a partner character for someone, but I can't remember. Um, or he's just like a someone who just turns up at one point. But essentially, as you can see, we're starting as Akiyama from Yakuza 4. And... We get to skip a couple of cutscenes here, but essentially, uh, Akiyama finds a gun and Akiyama finds some zombies. <laughs> we'll talk about that more in a minute. But essentially, we do the usual Yakuza thing of having a big, long tutorial. And actually, I've found that in the tutorials, uh, the zombies here actually take damage that we can't see, like, during these tutorials. So ideally, with the auto fire here, we want to try and hit as many of these zombies as possible. So there's one place zombie at the back that has not been hit yet. So I kind of need to try and get him hit at least once, if not twice. That's one. I won't get the other one. That's fine. Uh, so when you're shooting in Yakuza Dead Souls, you kind of aim automatically at zombies and just shoot at them, and it just shoots them, which is good. Uh, this is kind of like strafe aiming. If it looks a little weird, it is. That one zombie on the right isn't actually a problem because he's actually still in the way. And you can see everybody else is going down to one shot because we shot them multiple times in that tutorial. But essentially... Story-wise, this is set a year after the events of Yakuza 4. It should be noted that it is completely non-canon, which should be pretty obvious. But Akiyama, who is the moneylender from Yakuza 4, he 
and obviously it's just Hannah here. They were out, uh, like, obviously going to get money, and zombies fell out of this building. That you can see the police over there in the corner. Uh, we see one kind of zombie just kind of, like, bite them and turn everybody else into zombies. And if you look at the mini-map of Camarocho on the bottom left, that's all about to change in the next chapter. Um, but this, this game has underwent a lot of drastic changes over the last couple of months. Uh, thanks to a certain somebody in this call, uh, would you like to <laughs> describe how absolutely unreal it is to run this game on a PS3 and the time saves, the ludicrous time saves to the different versions? <laughs> okay, I'll own up to this. I was the one who uh, basically <laughs> convinced people to switch to SSDs because... Shockingly, on a hard drive, this game takes so long to load. And SSDs, even though it might seem like it makes sense now, hadn't been tested before for Dead Souls. So imagine my shock when I got an SSD one day. I was like, oh yeah, look, here's a comparison video. It's way better. <laughs> and now everyone just goes SSD. It's crazy. Which causes a little bit of problems, but yeah. So... In reference to how how much this has changed things, oh nice doubles. I need the one. That sucks. Uh, we want at least like two doubles there. Dead Souls is a bit weird. It's kind of hard. I'm gonna hit the guy in the middle because I haven't hit them before. And again, much like the earlier tutorial, damage obviously stocks up in these tutorials. So I want to hit all the zombies to make sure they go down in one shot like that. But to kind of describe how Dead Souls' run has kind of evolved, um, a year ago this was a free forty. It's now a 240. Two of the big reasons for that are, as Street Bad Guy says, obviously going to SSD, that saved 15 minutes. Here's the even better part. On base PS4, I used to run the disc version. Going from the disc version to the digital PSN version saved 20 minutes. So going digital and SSD saves you about 35 minutes in load times. Again, I feel kind of partially responsible for the PSN <laughs> thing, but hey, it's fine. We get less load times, we get to play this game less. It's good. <laughs> there's certainly, in the in the disc version on base PS3 with hard drive, there's some really nasty load times. They are horrible. I actually really like this game. Like, unironically, I do like this game. A lot of people don't like this game, but I actually really like this game. So... It's still heavily in tutorial phase. Uh, the you have to keep make sure that all of your guns are reloaded at like certain times because your ammo count kind of sticks with you. We have to kill these zombies on the truck. I'm actually aiming for their chest instead of their head because if you hit their head and they get a headshot, they can actually not die instantly. There's some zombies in this game that have like absurd HP values. You will see them, um, and those two can actually be some of them. So. We also have the usual Yakuza abilities. All of your abilities track between characters, so they all like kind of share abilities. That zombie wasn't a physical entity because he wasn't in the actual world yet, but his hitbox is. So his hitbox pushed me around. You'll also see every so often whilst also shooting some zombies that I could just walk past. We're actually doing that for a reason that we'll describe a bit later. And ideally, it doesn't matter in this chapter because I'm probably getting hit here. Uh, we'd like to not take damage at certain points, but if you're wondering about the performance issue of this game, fire effects amongst other things. Good roll. Uh, it's really hard to get that angle so that you only get hit by the fire once. You can get hit by the fire multiple times and fall backwards. Uh, any kind of effects can drop the FPS to about, you know, one. So... If you see me panning the camera down most of the time in this run, it's also to try and save frames. This corridor is kind of awful. Uh, I try, I'm trying to take this in multiple different ways. When you roll, you actually move your hitbox so you can get through them. There's, with the different difficulties, with Dead Souls difficulty, every single zombie starts in a hyper-aggressive state. So literally any zombie that spawns in will literally just rush and kill you. So that's something that can actually help out. It's a shame I didn't kill oh. you, that's fine. Oh, definitely. Um, you may also just notice how Froove is manually aiming sometimes, and that's because you do shoot slightly faster when manually aiming, uh, but the manual aiming isn't the best, so in, in a way it's kind of a good thing that the game forces you to get head tracking just to make it slightly more tolerable. 
Yeah. Oh, nice position on you. Usually that zombie right there is in the middle of the alleyway, and they, when you kill a zombie, their hitbox lingers for a little bit, so they become a physical wall in small alleys like that. So here, we're going to try and shoot zombies to build up our heat. Again, headshots are good for this, but as there's a couple of zombies that are around, you can see just shooting into the group on the left actually makes that a bit faster. You want to try and do this within, obviously, one clip so you can just get this heat attack off. Any heat attacks cost a bullet. I'm going to be holding the camera down here so that once we get out of this cutscene, I don't lose FPS. <laughs> there's, there's going to be a lot of that. I'm also going to keep an eye on the floor just in case there's an item drop. So, especially on easy difficulty, zombies have a very high chance of dropping extra items. With the any percent route that we're currently doing, there's a couple of extra things we can do that can save us a bunch of time in the run if we get lucky with our item drops. So, the story at the moment is that Akiyama's assistant Hannah is feeling unwell. You can see now this area of Kamurocho that we ran through before is now infested, like there's zombies everywhere. This Yakuza here is called Nagahama. Uh, his entire story arc is that he really likes this one guy called Kazuma Kiryu. Never heard of that guy. Who? I've never heard of the guy. <laughs> Oh. It's kind of a shame that we don't really see much more of Nagahama, though, until, like, the fourth part of this game. Because after Akiyama's part, he's literally missing throughout this route. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, there are other NPCs, because we were going to Dokimoto's, is what, another one, like, long-time NPC in this series. Um, but in the side content in this game, you can actually get partner characters, and we'll talk about those later when a certain somebody turns up. Uh, but this is Hasegawa. Uh, we started off originally... I think both me and Street Bad Guys started off originally running uh, New Game Plus of this, uh, which basically one-shots everything with a giant satellite laser. Um, it's actually quite fun, but... Essentially, Hasegawa, even in New Game Plus, New Game Plus actually like gets rid of the tutorials in this game, which is fantastic. But Hasegawa still turned up and used to be a nuisance. Then the Dead Souls difficulty any percent runners came in and found a really good use for Hasegawa because she's just told us about certain missions. So if we do things like whilst we're actually playing the game, we'll get these points that will accumulate in the background and we will be able to use those for rewards. In the any percent of the one that you're seeing today on easy, we get a lot more points than on Dead Souls difficulty because there's one category in particular for killing zombies without taking damage that is really, really good. And don't worry, the, uh, the points will be very important during uh, the third character's part. Uh, we're going to save up our points for that part specifically because it's probably the most convenient place that we actually get to spend them. Yeah, which is nice. Everything kind of just like gets together at that point just to work. So the game's given us a Desert Eagle and a submachine gun. Uh, they have uses. The Desert Eagle is really good. Um, I'm going to sell it. <laughs> you'll, you'll see why. I'm not sure, because I only really came up with this route, like, just in the last few days. So I'm not sure if you actually know what I'm going to do with that street bad guy. I, I don't think so, no. So this is all going to be new for me, but is this how you funded um, the yeah. both? Ah, okay. Yep. I gotcha. <laughs> yup. <laughs> yup, this is, this is it. So, the Desert Eagle, as you can see, pretty much, not always guaranteed, but pretty much takes care of zombies in one shot. So for this starting part, it's going to be really useful. Also, for some reason, the game is once again going to tutorialize us on how to do heat attacks, but this time with a partner. Now, we can't fill up the entirety of our heat beforehand, because it actually puts us at, like, a default, like, heat level here. Two quick headshots will fill it up to full if we can get them. Nice, good lineup. And then we're going to do our caught peak time. And once again, once this is done, we're going to pan the camera down to make sure the FPS doesn't drop. Trust, that's a running theme with this game. <laughs> There you go. You saw the FPS very slightly drop at the start there, but we should be very soon getting our first reward that we should be important. Oh, also, there's not just normal zombies either. There is uh, there is special infected, the first of which you will see as we uh, go forward around this corner. Nice lucky drop. Block of steel. Good. Okay, that's one of four. I need to get my new balalaika out. This is a meathead. It's not a tank, okay? Just the uh, trust. So, thankfully and easy, every zombie just stands around so we can actually just, like, shoot the barrel and hopefully take care of everybody else. Now, the special infected drop... Oh, two, that's beautiful RNG so far. 
So, the normal zombies, uh, they the, the the normal zombies are very very rare in dropping like normal materials. Every special infected has two different types of materials they can drop. One that's exclusive to them. Uh, for the meathead, it'd be a meathead belt. Uh, for some of the later ones, it'd be a beret or a helmet or something like that. Uh, for every one of those, they also have one of the normal materials that they are also proficient in. We need at least four blocks of steel for later on. If we get six, there's a potential we can do something a little special, but we need another exceptionally rare material on top of that that I need four drops of in a specific chapter that has only ever happened once. And that was in the world record PB, actually. Oh, no, it wasn't. No, that was the one before. Yeah. Uh, would you like oh. to talk about the subterranea? Kind of where we are. Ah, <laughs> uh, this place... <laughs> Oh, this place sucks. sucks. If, if you want to run New Game Plus, then uh, you have to do the Endless Subterranean, which we'll get introduced to in a little bit. Don't worry, you'll you'll know when that is. But um, this this part is pretty easy. Uh, you're just going through, and this is where you'll be uh, introduced to another uh, Special Infected, which is just going to come around this corner. Uh, any lawyers from Valve, please don't sue. Is it this crybaby not a witch? Promise? Uh, I promise. No witchcraft here. I promise. Nice um, but luckily, the subterranea for this part and another bit in Akiyama's part are the same layout, whereas usually it'll be randomized. So you can just go the same way both times, which is very, very handy indeed. Yeah, the subterranea is usually comprised of just randomized floors, but thankfully the story ones are not. Uh, I can't remember the exact amount of floors you have to do. Uh, the super boss Amon is actually tied to the subterranea in this game. He's not tied to all substories like with most Yakuza games. Um, so, yeah, he gives you the satellite laser that we use in New Game Plus. So that's that's the reason why the subterranea is important. But thankfully, we don't have to deal with it in any percent. Nagham's going to leave for a tiny little while. Once again, he mentions a certain someone called Kiryu Kazuma. Never heard of the guy. And then we're going to get into no. a little bit of speed tech coming up after this. I'm afraid uh, I'm a big fan of Taichi Suzuki, not uh, this Kiryu <laughs> person. <laughs> the taxi driver, yes. <laughs> I know that. I know that man. <laughs> for that man at SGDQ last year. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so... Now that we're out into the quarantine zone of Kamurocho, we are supposed to go to Dokimoto's. You'll see that I'm running away from it. This is another long-time series NPC, Kamiyama. He is usually, in the earlier games, the blacksmith who deals with your weapons. What a surprise in the game with guns, he's also the blacksmith. But the fun fact is, despite there canonically being two Kamiyamas, in this game there's only this Kamiyama, which I think is Renji Kamiyama, but fun fact, in that last bit there, he's on the map in two locations. So we go specifically behind us to this Kamiyama, and we save literally about 30 seconds. You cannot avoid Kamiyama at all, which is a shame, because if we could avoid Kamiyama on the way to Dokimoto's, we could avoid this bit, which is also not skippable in New Game Plus, which is a pain in the backside, because once again, here comes Hasegawa. But in any percent, for both the any percent that we're doing and also the Dead Souls difficulty, this trip is actually really useful. Really, really useful. There's not much to say about this part. It's literally just introducing you to the quarantine zone as a. This is its introduction, basically. Um, well, outside of the opening of Akiyama, but yeah, I'm not counting that. But here is where we'll get our first uh, useful pickup as well. Uh, it's technically. Not part of the tutorial, but it spawns there consistently. And we'll be getting much more of those throughout the run. Because it helps with money. Yeah. Yeah, it's always good to get them for safety. And they always spawn in the same places. Um, for the Dead Souls difficulty, we'll already have picked up a different one, actually. But, yeah. Zombies... Okay, so zombies spawns as well. Uh, they're actually in... Fixed locations. So you saw the door on the right-hand side there that basically led to nothing. Zombies can spawn from there. They can spawn from vents on the ceiling, vents on the walls. There's basically a whole bunch of places where we know where they'll spawn. And then there's just some areas where they'll spawn from like an invisible wall or something. But they're all consistent at the very least. And you yeah, recognize this run back. Oh, yeah. There's, there's, um, there's also some parts where zombies will just spawn in out of thin air and you can actually see that happen. It's, it's, it's magical. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna happen soon. 
So, yeah, as that guy was saying, pay attention to the middle of the screen. It's kind of hard to make out a PS3 resolution, but you see that item there. There's actually a heart coming out from it. That's to indicate that it's one of these special items. There's two zombies in front of me here, unlike usual. There's usually just the one. So I'll make sure they're out of my way. My, I haven't got the, uh, I don't think I've got the 75 without being damaged yet, which is a shame. Definitely that one hit I took in the previous chapter wasn't ideal, but I can fix that later. That's why we'll be picking up extra the cutie girl figures. But yeah, this, these vents on the ceiling, as you can see, they're going to drop down from there. Again, when zombies are spawning in, their hitboxes are there, so technically you can shoot them. But there's some zombies that when they spawn in, you can't actually shoot them, they're invulnerable. It, it's a bit weird. It depends on the spawn point. Like, that, that zombie right there would have been shootable before he'd even hit the ground. But... The zombies that come out from crawl spaces, like on the left there, they're not shootable until they're fully stood up. It's it's really weird. You, you get used to it as you run. I was the, hoping that the one zombie that usually comes from that right-hand door would have come through there so I could have done a trick shot, but unfortunately not. <laughs> it's really dumb. I, I understand why, but um, for some reason as well, rolling into the doors um, or the area transitions and pressing X... That's slightly faster than just running up to it as well. That's something I do. I'm not sure if you do it often in your run, but... Um, I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, it's just something I noticed, and I just thought it was really stupid. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is. There's certain like little intricacies and rules to Dead Souls that, obviously because of a third-person zombie shooter, don't count the same in the other Yakuza's. Um, most of the time, if you ever see any Yakuza speedrun, you'll see us take like 20 to 30 plus taxis. In this game, we don't take the taxi at all, because if you look at the minimap, you can see that red square. And this is something that I actually quite like that Dead Souls does, even though it's quite restrictive. Dead Souls changes the map up like constantly throughout the game. So this area next to us in Fiat Square, we can't get there until we go into the quarantine zone. But this is where the magic's going to happen. We're going to go to Kamiyama. And with that anime figure we picked up, Kamiyama will buy it off of us for more than the secondhand shop Ebisu. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell him a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to sell him blah, blah, blah. all of my submachine gun ammo, the cutie girl figure. That's usually actually a lot, a lot higher in my inventory, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to now sell the two weapons that we've got, the Desert Eagle and the submachine gun. That gives us another 60k. Now I'm going to buy two weapons. <laughs> if you think this is a convoluted menu, wait till later. The hunting shotgun and the SWS2 sniper rifle. And of course, we need a little bit of ammo for those. So we want to buy ourselves four boxes, a shotgun, and one rifle. That leaves us with one open inventory space, which is important. Because we need to try and get certain items as drops, hopefully. The block of steel is actually one of them. Having two of them already, like, actually really puts my mind at ease. When I was making, when I was doing practice earlier, making certain safety saves, uh, I got some absolutely unreal luck. Um, I got six of the, of a specific special infected uh, drop, which, in the speedrun, we don't actually want any of those. So, having the two blocks of steels already is uh, very comforting. We can finally get on with the story now and go to Dokimoto's to try and get the medicine for Hannah. That's the other side of that wall there is where we met Nagahama earlier. And Dokimoto isn't here because Dokimoto is actually a partner character for Akiyama. There's a substory for Akiyama that you can do to unlock his partner character, Dokimoto. Pretty much every character has like two, if not more, partner characters. So one of Akiyama's is Dokimoto. And then the hostesses that usually appear in the Yakuza games are your other partner characters. But there's also another Yak as a living legend that turns up. And he's fantastic in this game. Good old Gary Buster Holmes. So, this is actually... So as far as, like, as long as I've been doing Yak as a speedruns, this is actually where we figured out certain minigames were skippable. Because I was having a run of Dead Souls where I was really frustrated with how it was going. I got to Gary here, and you have to do one of either field combat or shooting range. Doesn't matter which one. And I was losing about, I think about like 30 to 45 seconds at the time. I was like, I can do better than this. So I was just like, if you press select, you go back to the title screen. So I was like, yep, yeah, I'll just stop playing. Sure. Gary lets us know how he feels about that. Bad. But here's the thing, the game's still going. That's how we figured out minigames were skippable. <laughs> and then Yakuza Dead Souls does the one nice thing that it's ever going to do and actually teleports us halfway across the map if we say yes. We say yes. <laughs> Basically, Dead Souls has more influence on the entire Yakuza speedrun series than you realize. <laughs> yep. If most people actually, like, because I run, like, pretty much every single Yakuza game at the minute apart from the two PSP ones, everyone asks me, like, 
So I started with like zero or Kiwami or like six or something like that, right? Nope, my first run was this. My first Yak speedrun was actually this. Hello, I know what I've forgotten to do. I've forgotten to put my guns. Oh no. But uh, what other game would you have first? Honestly, this is the perfect zero. intro game. <laughs> the zero. Oh, well. <laughs> a fun Yak as a speedrun. <laughs> Well, again, I do like this game. I do actually like the speedrun, especially the changes we've done. Scrap iron, good. We need a couple of those. I think we need six of those. Might be wrong I on that. Five, I think. It's either five or six. It's like it's quite a like, it's quite a lot. The scrap iron is also the most common material that we can get. Essentially, what we need these materials for is the shotgun in our hand right now. If we can get the blocks, the four blocks of steel, we can actually upgrade this shotgun. Uh, there's, I don't think there's any way to do it early. Uh, that meathead is always in this corridor. Thankfully, he's usually in a good position. If you're on Dead Souls difficulty, because every like actual zombie and special effect can start like hyper aggressive, he'll be running towards you. <laughs> and the first one will be kicking explosive barrels towards you. So. And something happened there that I should probably explain because this is going to be a problem in certain set pieces later. I actually got a headshot whilst running on one of the zombies. That caused a bit of a like a louder sound effect that you probably heard. That headshot also has a bit of an AoE effect. So it actually has a little bit of knockdown to any zombies that are around the zombie. Well, thank you. <laughs> any zombies that are actually around the one you get headshot by. Yes, you can get pushed by certain objects and ooh, zombies. Thank you again. Uh, you can also get pushed backwards. <laughs> also magical appearing zombies Ooh. <laughs> spawns in this game are fantastic now there are certain are oh, nice because that zombie again that's one place where you can get a hitbox that stops you but if you can get the good angle there you can just push them out of the way there can be a crybaby in the way which she kind of is but she should be fine it's those I'm worried about nice uh, nope his hitbox stopped me for a second alright so there's going to be certain rooms like this one as well that just kind of suck uh, there's only two zombies, and because there's not that many zombies, they make them really tanky for some reason. But if I can hopefully get a good couple of hits off here. I wanted a headshot originally, but that's fine. Yeah. Actually not knock it, because if you headshot the uh if you headshot one of the two of them has like a genuinely high HP bar. It does like it can be either one of them. With that room there, not knocking them to the ground is actually a little bit preferred because then you don't have to like aim. Um we used to use the sniper rifle there, but usually, even when you use the sniper rifle and you headshot one of them, one of their heads is going to go into the wall, so it's going to be really hard to, like, double headshot. But with the shotgun there, you can actually just, like, do a headshot and still just have, still just aim at them, like, really quickly, unlike having to, like, re-aim with the sniper rifle. See, I never I never used the sniper rifle there. I used to use the deagle, but again, seeing as deagle you, was good. like, sold it, yeah. Seeing yeah. as you sold it now, I guess shotgun makes a bit more sense. Yeah, shotgun and sniper rifle timing is relatively the same. Shotgun can be a little bit faster. I think that was usually... I think that one was a little bit slower than I usually do, but usually I get the, the headshot first. It's usually just one headshot, two headshot, and then body shot. Now our next special infected. I don't like the name of this one. <laughs> this uh, is... Lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, this is the monkey boy. Um, once again, the street back guy was saying, uh, "Lawyers, please look away." It's definitely not a jockey from Left for Dead. They're gonna get in the way later on. They really are gonna get in the way. <laughs> yeah, they're probably the most annoying special infected, I'd say, because they they get in the way more often than any of the others. At least in my experience, I'm not sure about you, but that's fully what agreed. I felt like. Yeah, yeah fully, fully agreed. <laughs> Again, invisible spawning zombies. For some of these zombies, you can see that I'm waiting until I'm a bit closer so that obviously, like, they can get knocked away like that, which is nice. Here's a bunch of the army. Uh, we're supposed to use this gun emplacement to actually help them. Uh, this is us using the gun emplacement to help them. No. Why? <laughs> Why not standing citizen? <laughs> Just gonna go. Uh, there's a crybaby there that if you get very, very lucky, she can spawn in the way and you can try and get an extra material item, but it's not actually that necessary here. Do we get... Yep, we do the low poly rat. Uh, these sewers... I'm very certain he spawns all the time in Dead Souls. Uh, there's a low poly rat that goes along this pipe on the right-hand side um, every time in this game, but in some of the other Yakuza runs that have these sewers, uh, 4 and 5, uh, it's a random chance for him to turn up. He's a good boy, that rat. We consider him good luck. So yeah, now the shotgun just breaks those barricades in one hit, which is really nice. We used to use the submachine gun, uh, which took a little bit of time, and a Molotov that's positioned up there. There's the 75 in a row without being hit. So you can see that's 750 points. That's a lot of points. 
we essentially want as many... Ah, all the bodies are in the way, look. Uh, we want as many bundles of a thousand points as we can get. Every thousand point is going to be important. So ideally, by the time we have to use these points, we have around about 5,000 points is good if we've got a lot of uh, the anime figures. And two of those, uh, two of those lovely jumping lads. Speaking of the uh, lovely cute girl figures, I went through the entire game before because I had to rebuild a save file just to recreate my new game plus. And I went through and just took note of where each consistent spawn for those figures were. And if you're low on figures from them not dropping, it's just good to have as a backup. And they could be found all throughout uh, the first three chapters, really. Not chapters, hmm. parts. What am I talking about? Yeah. It, it's parts, <laughs> it's chapters, it, it, it's broken down. Part one, chapter two. <laughs> it's half three in the morning. We, we've got that to see. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the me head there, you can actually avoid him on Dead Souls difficulty because, again, he's really aggressive, so he walks towards you quite early. Please don't bother me, sir. Oh, you're still alive. That's unfortunate. Usually the shotgun takes him out, and he's just not doing anything. I kind of appreciate that. He grabbed Nagahammer. That's not fine. Um... We need Nagahammer for speed tech for the next uh, kind of floor. Uh, he'll be fine. This cutscene will get rid of the monkey boy, but his high HP is like kind of half at the minute. So we have those medkits. We have two medkits per ally. Usually it's not a problem, but I just have to keep an eye on his HP in case he gets grabbed again. Nagahammer's just having fun back there. You can hear him shooting. Uh, I want to get my sniper rifle out for the next bit. I hope to avoid all these zombies because they can get in the way. Because down here is a crybaby that if you can shoot fast enough, you can take care of. Another scrap iron, good. I've actually got more blocks of steel than scrap iron. This is a very interesting run. Uh, we have three of the four necessary um, blocks of steel right now. If we manage to get the four elastic alloy, we need two extra blocks of steel. So this early luck is very, very good. Thankfully, all the special infected in this room aren't in the way. Good. Hey, yeah, this bit. You... Oh, yeah, go on. Sorry. I was sorry, I was just saying, if you usually get enough drops before the second character's part starts, you're pretty much good to go for the rest of the run in terms of upgrades. But again, it all depends on RNG mostly. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, don't shoot the Nagahammer. Hammer. So ideally, you'd shoot one of the zombies there that's too close uh, that can actually stop Nagahammer to go fast here because Nagahammer can stop and shoot any of these zombies like that. Nagahammer is the cutscene. It's actually the cutscene trigger here, so I really want him to come forward, and I don't have the range on the shotgun here. You'll see here, if he comes to this bit, we can just run back, and then we get the cutscene early, instead of having to go all the way down that corridor. So, ideally, you need Nagahammer there to, you know, hurry up a little bit. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> and yeah, that was, a, that was a preview of a loading screen for this game. It seemed a little bit long, but remember, this is on SSD. If you're on hard drive, oh boy, you're in for a treat. <laughs> yeah, the, there's an infamous cutscene, um, or there's an infamous set of cutscenes on loading screens at the end of um, the second character's part that on hard drive, uh, hard drive disk version takes about three minutes to get through, but on SSD digital only takes one. That's kind of the difference we're talking here. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's actually made this like quite fun because we get back into the action a lot faster, which is nice. Oh, for sure. We can just skip through that exposition dump like very easily, which is always nice. Yep. But yeah, because this game takes place after Yakuza 4, we do the whole Yakuza 4 thing of basically splitting everyone's, char everyone's chapters into four parts. So this is the last one for... Akiyama. Hannah, obviously you saw earlier, Serena got overrun, so she went to a nearby building, the Oriental building. That's why we're trying to get there. This man right here is Kine. He's the guy that leads us to the subterranean. We don't like this guy. <laughs> we're just going to leave. Thankfully, I'm I, doing pretty good on, uh, on inventory space right now. I feel intense, fiery hatred whenever I see him, honestly. <laughs> I've had to redo the subterranean about four times. I don't ever want to do it again. <laughs> Same. It, it takes you about more than four hours, depending on the floor layouts that are generated. It's it's really rough. Yeah, it really is. Uh, I guess I'll do it here just to be consistent with what I usually do. Uh, I'm going to get an upgrade on Akiyama here. We get it always on Dead Souls difficulty because now we can pick up large objects like the oops, explosive barrels to my left. 
which we used to use here, but now that we have a shotgun, actually, everything goes down pretty well. That's where the 100 is. That's not ideal. I need this lad to stop. You can see the FPS is dropping, so it's also dropping my rate of fire. This is why, literally, FPS saving strats are important. Nice, everyone's dead. Scrap iron is good. I think you've got enough scrap iron now, actually. That might be good enough for the rest of the run. My drops have been fantastic. Sorry for the camera folks it's to save the FPS in that room again. Uh, do I have an inventory space? I do. Uh, sometimes with this route, we don't actually have the inventory space for that, but because I didn't get any of the special infected uh, materials, I knew I pretty much had a spot for that. This room's kind of a pain. Hopefully the monkey boy just went to our left. Doesn't go there! <laughs> Please. Uh, war camera, camera, camera? Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I wasn't scared, not at all. Uh, make sure your guns, especially the sniper rifle, are reloaded here. We need the sniper rifle in a bit. Uh, four zombies are going to spawn, two on each side. Reload after the fourth, and then we're going to have to clear the zombies out from in front of the lift. And then we're going to use something that the Dead Souls runners actually came up with here, because the uh, the strat here is actually really nice on Dead Souls difficulty. Uh, basically, the chainsaw. Uh, the chainsaw makes very quick work of certain special infected, like this meathead. Also, if you knock the uh, furniture into zombies as well, you're actually alive. Oh, he's not. Wow, that's actually really quick. Uh, if you knock the furniture into like some of them as well, that's all four blocks of steel. Excuse me? That's absurd. I don't think I've oh. ever had all four, like the four coming out of Akiyama. That's... Wow. Okay. Rifle time. <laughs> the one that's thing we bought the rifle before. for. <laughs> that actually has never happened before. That's really, really good luck. So, this boss is an interesting one. Uh, we're going to play a game in this run quite a few times. Try and guess where the weak spot is. Also, this is definitely not a liquor, by the way. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Capcom lawyers, look away, please. Cre good. Creative liberties. It's fine. <laughs> That's actually really good luck on that walk of steel. That's really, really good. I'm very happy with that. So, if you PB from this, I'll be very impressed. I'm not doing too hot right now, but if we can take care of the Arahabaku of skipping one of its phases, that'd be good. So, mm. we can actually skip a phase of this boss. Unfortunately, that missed. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. If I stay here, I want to basically start shooting the Arahabaki in a certain position so that he comes and tries to jump at me. He's actually jumping away in the wrong direction, which is a shame. Hey, he's going to do it. Oh, he's actually gone on the ceiling. That's not great, but actually this can work out. We need to skip a phase by basically shooting him off of the ceiling. He's going to come and do an attack where he tries to punch me, but if he goes down here, that'd be such a good position. That's bad, I missed a shot. I need to move because he's going to do this. Yeah, he has a long arm. He's going to hit you with that. Please go down. I, I'm surprised he hasn't. There we go. And I'm in a good spot because his weak spot is the big red thing on his chest. And unfortunately, I'm down... Ammo. I've mismanaged this fight. It's really hard to hit this weak spot. It looks like I'm hitting it. His arms and legs have giant hitboxes. So they're actually getting in the way of me hitting the weak spot. That's why ideally you can get to like one of his shoulders or the head because you have less chance of hitting the arms. Now we play Whack-A-Mole, so I have to figure out where he is. He's there. And then hopefully take him out before he tries to punch me. Good freeze enough, what, and I get to really What doesn't help is that, like, the oh, controller please. sensitivity is awful as well. So, as you can see, trying to aim the sniper is painful at times. Yeah. You can see how much extra damage I did there when I finally shot the weak spot. <laughs> Hitting weak spots does a lot of damage. That's Akiyama. Ooh, I do right there. Uh, you'll know when we hit the weak spot because it makes this like glass breaking sound. Um, that's been something that I've been trying to figure out with the next boss that's going to come up because the next boss is a pain in the backside. But we'll get to him in mm. like 10 minutes. That was a gold spot. Yeah. Hmm. Not bad. It's, so, it's that uh, block of steel luck. <laughs> yeah. So as we were as we were kind of alluding to before, uh, everything kind of like keeps between characters. Weapons don't. Weapons are actually unique to each character. Akiyama's unique weapon is actually a pistol. The two sets of pistols. One of those zombies is alive. Actually, two of them are. One elastic alloy in the first room. Excuse me. 
That's a lot disgusting. There's 15 zombies in this first room, so I'm keeping an eye on the kill count. With Majima, and yes, this was Majima's first playable appearance, by the way. With Majima, I'm keeping an exceptionally close eye on the kill count. Because as you saw, there were some zombies that got knocked down and didn't die. So I need to keep track of which zombies are still alive and which aren't, and go back and finish them off. And speaking of the cutie girl figures, there's also rare zombies that can turn up. Uh, they're all in fixed locations like the cutie girl figures. Here's one of them. There goes one of them. Uh, cutie girl figure, perfect. Extra 50,000. So, even if somehow I'm down for points on Hasegawa, we will be okay. I've got plenty of money. I die was hoping. <laughs> I, I mean, you still got you still got time. You still got time. We can wait and see. <laughs> we got the one drop. I think we have to go for. I think we have to go for the fatties. Like, we have the chance of getting all three. Like, so uh -huh. the the special infected that drops the elastic alloy actually only starts spawning in Majima's first chapter, and we need the four elastic alloy before Majima's second chapter. So. If we have a chance to get all of them, then I will try for it, and I actually do have a chance for it. It won't lose me that much time going for it. I'll only probably lose like five seconds at most. But if I can get it, I can save a minute in the run. So, yeah, it, it's kind of it's kind of necessary. I also want to say that uh, everything that is happening in this run is very fresh and very new, uh, because the old route didn't used to do all this stuff. It's crazy. <laughs> not until this week. So this is no. a fatty. Again, we're not fat shaming. And again, Valve, please drop the lawyers. Uh, yes, they're kind of like boomers. When they explode, uh, they secrete gas, I guess. Uh, we don't want that to happen. <gasps> oh, I, I audibly gasped. Oh, no. Zombie, please. Zombie hitbox, please. Oh, yeah. This doorway is just a pain. Just in general. Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> Zombie hitboxes in this game are great. So we still have two fatties left, and obviously the normal zombies, as you've seen, have a chance to drop it as well. So yeah, if we if we could get this, it's really good. For this room, you want to shoot one shotgun shot because you can actually hit the zombies on the floor. This me head's always in an awkward position, but if he's turning around, you just walk past him. <laughs> but this is why I also take care of some like extra zombies to try and get like extra chance to drops uh this crybaby's gonna spawn in if you get lucky you can take her out before she summons back up oh no i didn't so she actually didn't do the crybaby like kind of animation or sound and you can see the zombies are still coming in there might be yeah, one behind me as well yep. this is again why i keep an eye there's one more ah how are you alive so I keep an eye on kill counts whenever I do uh, whenever I do this because you can kind of tell, okay, that one's alive, that one's not alive. So my last two fatties that are the ones that give us a high chance of elastic alloy are in this room. So if we can get two elastic alloy in this room, this is going to be really good. Uh, again, panning the camera down in case they explode. You'll probably see one of them explode. Yeah, there you go. There goes the FPS. The nice thing about them exploding is that you can actually tell which zombies on the floor are alive a lot easier. I really was hoping that I wouldn't have clipped in there. Let's see. One, so I need one drop. I mean, technically, you can have a chance for another elastic alloy to drop from any of these zombies or the zombies after the next boss, which is straight after this. So, if you're lucky, fingers crossed. Hopefully, I'll be keeping my eye out, that's for sure. One on the right is alive. So, you'll see me hopefully not hit those. You'll see me every so often just shoot zombies on the ground to try and kill them faster, but I'll always leave them till like near the end if there's like other zombies alive. It just makes it a little easier just to go back for them. Uh, but we're going to be up against it for this last classic alloy, unfortunately. It's pretty rare at this point. But we'll see. We'll see. Mm. 3 or 4 is not actually too bad. I think my PB had a 3 or 2. Hmm. I can't even remember my PB. Mine was probably awful <laughs> compared to that. It's actually kind of nice to have these results screens. They annoyed me at first, but like they give you a detailed breakdown. And obviously for us speedrunners, like having that time there is kind of, you know, that's actually kind of useful. <laughs> Although the Yakuza in-game times are a little busted. i take all of the ammo. Uh, all of this ammo is not enough to get through Majima's part, by the way. <laughs> hey, do you want to talk about our lovely friend, the FPS killer? <laughs> oh, yes. So you may have noticed there is a tank on the right. And that is there, mainly to deal with this beautiful specimen. This lovely Onraki fella. As you can see, he's covered in rocks. 
And what Fruit is going to do is he's going to try and shoot his chest to expose his weak spot because that's where it is located. It's just hidden oh, by the armor. Get out. <laughs> you start with this. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, when you do shoot Ooh, off his armor, uh, the FPS does drop, which makes things quite a bit painful. That was a very nice shot with the tank, though. I'm very impressed with this fight already. Yeah, that breaking that chest spot actually helped out a lot. Uh, Yuzhou mm. wants to reload, but not just yet, because he's going to go to his next phase already. That's why he's, I think he's taking less damage, because he's about to go to his next phase. Like, I, I just noticed that he's taking way less damage than usual. Yeah, so the reason why you only want to shoot his chest, uh, in all honesty, is because, one, you don't want to waste too many frames, and two, when he changes phases, he'll shed all his armor anyway, so it, it's just pointless trying to, you know, derobe him off his rocks. That was a weird sentence I never thought I'd say, but hey -o. Okay, we're going um, for the car. Right. The car phase is annoying, but you can shoot through the cars. Which, which is you wouldn't, it wouldn't, you wouldn't think you'd be able to shoot through the car. You shoot through <laughs> the car. Just look, see, shoot through the car. Uh, actually, probably going to do this because he's actually kind of low. Might be able to skip the second car this way. Possibly, yeah. Oh, it's too close. Ah, uh, that sucks. Oh. Okay, we're going to do a little different then, where I'm going to wait here and just shoot him and then try and get a little hit. Yeah, weak spot hit as he stands up. Cool. I was okay. I was okay. I couldn't do that better if I don't get, like, too close to the car. That car's explosion has, like, a very giant radius. Also, you'll notice a certain something on uh, his shoulder. We first saw that at the end of Akiyama's part, and basically we're guessing that somebody is, like, hand-making these zombies. Um... Najima's whole shtick is that he is uh, he's absolutely loving the fact it's a zombie apocalypse, because of course he would. It's, it's Majima. Uh, and he's trying to go and find good old Tojo clan chairman Daigo Dojima, who once again is just missing. <clears throat> again. Oh, don't worry. He'll pop up here and there, you know. Always say <laughs> as, hi. <laughs> as he does. Alright, so there's our last chance to hopefully get the elastic alloy, so I'm going to have to... I'm going to be shooting zombies as I go along here and just Hoping for a lucky drop. If I see even one drop, I'm going for it. Oh, and also along this way, uh, we are introduced to our next special infected, which is actually a very unique one compared to the others. Actual original character, do not steal. <laughs> this is the aggro. Uh, as you can probably guess, they get really aggressive. Uh, that's going to be a problem in the next chapter. <laughs> for now, we just walk past that one. He he's just there, he's just chilling, he's minding his own business. Oh, fair yeah. enough. All right, this is the last place you can really get an elastic alloy if you're lucky, but yeah, mm, doesn't well, seem you are too lucky this time. Nah, it's a shame. I'm surprised I got as many as I did actually. Um, okay, so basically now we don't need the extra blocks of steel, which means we're good on blocks of steel for the rest of the run, uh, and it also obviously means that we can't get the elastic alloy. Uh, we'll explain the reason why as we get into Majima's second chapter here. Because there's there's a very good reason. Most of the characters in Yakuza Dead Souls, they're only in the, the quarantine part of Kamurocho like once. Like they're usually just in the part that has all of the zombies for like the vast majority of like everything that they do. Which is gonna be the same for Majima. Um he's gonna get back to Kamurocho in his final part, but for now, this is the only time that he's gonna be in Kamurocho. And that's why we wanted to have the, obviously, the materials. And because of the bit that we just ran through, which you saw earlier with Akiyama, which is where Kamiyama's truck was, obviously the map has now changed. You can see on the mini-map that there's going to be, a, obviously, a little bit more red to it. Uh, Kamiyama has moved himself over to just up here. Again, I'm panning the camera down for FPS and to despawn civilians. It's, this, this game requires it a little bit. Um, but here's Kamiyama's truck. You can see it as we come up on the right here. Also, more importantly, I'm panning the camera up to show you all. On the right-hand side, if you look under the awning for the man named Tower, there's actually not the guy with the blue arrow, but just behind him, there's a hostess standing there. She's one of Majima's partner characters. It's why we can't kind of cut through that little bit to save a little bit of time. Uh, if you were to go and speak to her, you'd lose about a minute and a half to two minutes. So, <laughs> better to walk around. You can also see there's a little bit of the infected zone on the top right of the minimap as well. So, but we're going to get a introduction to a different regular enemy now. In the any percent easy route, they're an annoyance. In the any percent dead souls route, they're actually fantastic. 
these are Molotov zombies. You can probably guess why they're called Molotov zombies. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm 100% getting an elastic alloy in the next bit because the, the, the game likes to just say, hey, you wanted that elastic alloy? Well, too late now. <laughs> I'm going to give you a whole <laughs> bunch. All right, so we got to go to Kamurocho Hills, which has been in development since the second Yakuza game. And this, another good thing about Yakuza Dead Souls, thank you, Molotov Zombie. Another good thing about Yakuza Dead Souls is that actually this is the series' first and pretty much only instance where, Red Zombie, oh, another one, nice, where you can actually walk around Kamurocho Hills, not in a set piece. It, it, there's nothing there, but it's like this game of all games is the one where you can freely walk around at will. It, it's so bizarre. But yeah, if we had Majima's upgraded shotgun at this point, we'd be able to take out a lot of these, especially infected a lot faster. Let's hope we can take care of the monkey boy first. The other one also exploded. Uh, wow, that chain, that was interesting. So you can see that some of the zombies are aggroed. You can see like the cloud above their head. Every zombie in Dead Souls difficulty actually is like that, and they also get a mass speed boost. The one zombie next to me is alive, by the way. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I don't actually think I need to, like, go for materials anymore, so I'm not going to, because we've got the scrap iron. Yeah, you got at least five scrap Oops. iron, and the blocks of steel, you should have enough for upgrades needed. Yep. We definitely have the blocks of steel. We absolutely have the blocks of steel. Uh, and the rest should be good as well. Okay. So, the front of Camarocho Hills is all barricaded up. That's important. We're going to be going to the back exit. So we're going to go past all these zombies. Thankfully, you don't really have to take care of any of these zombies. Oh, there is a zombie up there. I don't actually think you can get up there. It's just chilling up there. <laughs> it's gonna probably just there as set decoration. Yeah, I don't think they jump down either. I think they just, they're just there. Just having a good time. Uh, with the mission to Hasegawa, around about, hopefully inside of here, we're going to get the one for travel five kilometers. Uh, that's usually an indicator that I use to go, okay, how's my movement doing? Because obviously, we can have a little bit more movement in the Onraki fight due to having, you know, having to move away from the guy with the car. Um, but usually you'll get around the 5k mark here. If you get it outside of Kamurocho Hills, You've kind of done a lot more movement, so that's usually a sign that it's not going great, but usually you'll get it up here as soon as, yeah, we get to about this bit or the second floor. So that's okay, we're doing okay in terms of movement. And yeah, as I said, you can just walk around Camera Tree Hills. Everything's kind of like destroyed as Camera Tree Hills usually is, but like you get to you get to visit this place in like a set piece in Yakuza 5 and that's it. You don't get to come here like any other time, and it's so weird because like this the the building of this the building of this actual place was really important from like Yakuza two onwards, and it's just you never get to go inside. Anyway, here's a guy called Asmi who's yelling at Majima, and oh hey, what's up, Daigo Dojima? <laughs> he just turns up in this game. It's just oh, hey, Daigo, how you doing? Um, TLDR, the oatmeal line, sir, up to no good. What a surprise! What an actual surprise! Can you imagine if in Yakuza 8 they actually let you go into a fully fleshed out Kamarocha Hills? That would, would be like, insane. I would like that. <laughs> <laughs> this, this building is supposed to be really important. Um, so, the Tojo clan are a bit stupid. To help out, some of them drive some trucks into the front of Kamarocha Hills and break the barricade. Now, we usually call this the Baby Rage chapter. You'll probably never be able to guess why. So, this kid is causing all the zombies to be aggro. So we're going to have to go and clear out the area only in front of the bathroom. I'm going to run forward a bit for Daigo to... He got caught already. Thanks, Daigo. You're not going to be any help. I usually <laughs> run forward so he runs with me and then obviously is in attack mode when we get to the last bit. But now he's not going to help. That mannequin can knock you over and it has done to me a couple of times recently. Uh, but the zombies we have to kill are only these ones in here. The monkey boy that was in the shop earlier is going to come after us, and so is this one. Thank you very much. There's the there's the jockey, but the two zombies that just came from either side there aren't important. I will kill this monkey boy here whilst I know where it is. Oh, that's not great. Because that other one is going to start to get in the way. Actually, you're the one I do need to kill, because you're the one I shot. Um... Uh 
there's also quite a bit of history with this game and soft locks. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm bringing this up because specifically at that door to the bathroom, I've had it soft lock on me way too many times. Same. And it's not fun. <laughs> it's, it's not fun. There are other places as well it can soft lock, but great game. Great game overall. 10 out of 10. I like this game. <laughs> I like this yeah. game, but with... I, I found way more soft locks since we put in an SSD, which I guess kind of makes sense. <laughs> I go help, please. <laughs> I go, I actually need your help. So... In this bit, this bit's unfortunate. We have to take care of literally every zombie. So we do have to pay attention in case there are some around, like, obviously the pillars. I'm going to be obviously keeping an eye on kill count because, like, that zombie's still alive. Uh, I don't know how that missed. Oh, hello there. I was expecting you a lot later than this, but that's fine. Um, and again, having, like, injured fatties helps because they obviously are, oh. like, blowing up the fatties helps because you can see, like, the zombies that are alive on the floor. And, of course, it gives you an elastic alloy now. Oh, yeah. Well, I was expecting it. <laughs> So you're going to be a problem. There are like two small waves of zombies that spawn behind us, which is why I'm not like moving too far forward. I think Daigo took care of most of them. Wow. Thanks, Daigo. And our first... You're not dead, are you? Because the problem is... Oh, he is. You don't see Daigo's kills as the problem. Or your, your NPC allies' kills, I should say, because that's going to be a problem later as well. Uh, this aggro is going to try and rush at me, but thanks to obviously Magma Shock and having like a whole bunch of knockback, don't have to worry about that too much. Well, I did that on purpose because I thought there was somebody alive here. My... Excuse you? <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks, Daigo. I think Daigo's had enough of us constantly talking bad about Daigo Dojima. <laughs> but Daigo doesn't really help much in Yak as a speedruns, but hey, can't fault Daigo there, that's for sure. Now we get to a... A wonderfully designed bit. This is weird. <laughs> so, we're going to have a waiting section here. We're going to have a timer on the top. It's going to be about, I think, yeah, a minute and a half. We have to protect the barricade as Daigo builds it because of what Tojo just did. So, I'm going to try building up my kill count now. And I want you to pay very close attention to the bottom right-hand side of the screen. I want you to notice right now that the barricade HP is going down. So I'm going to shoot the zombie. I'm going to turn and kill the zombie hitting the barricade. But wait, there's a twist. There's no zombies hitting the barricade. If you walk away from the barricade, it starts taking damage. We don't know why. <laughs> Daigo is not doing a good job rebuilding it. If you stand on the top, uh, it doesn't lose damage. Uh, it's not that important. You don't want to let it get broken because it's a game over. Uh, you want to be very careful with your shots as well, because if you hit the barricade, that can break it. And yes, the first thing I tried was to break the barricade to see if it made the game go faster. No, it did not. <laughs> <laughs> faster to game over, maybe? Sure. Let's count faster, it. Faster to end the yeah. speed run, maybe? But yeah, not not faster in the way that we would want it. Sadly not. I, I uh, Thanks, game. Yeah. For some, for some reason, like, I... This is my personal thing, but... I switched to the pistol throughout this whole thing. I try and avoid that. Because if you accidentally shoot the barricade yourself with a shotgun <laughs> or anything more powerful, well, then that's just rude, to be honest. And to be fair, this saves... accidentally shot it. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's with the pistol. Yeah. Um, and when you use the pistol, uh, it's got unlimited ammo. So you save your ammo for your other weapons. Oh, dear. Hey, you might recognize this, boss. <laughs> It's back, and it has a brand new technique that you'll see in a second. If we had the upgraded shotgun, we'd actually be able to just make it go into its next phase instantly. Uh, this is its new trick. It goes invisible. Hmm, I wonder where the enemy could be. I have no idea. Chat, if you know where the enemy is, please tell me, because I can't see where it is when it goes invisible. It's not like there's, you know, or a glowing red thing that tells us where it is. Also, if you get lucky, you can actually hit this weak spot when it's doing the uh, the roll. Uh, it will usually, if you don't have the upgraded shotgun, it will still try and attack you until you do a certain amount of HP damage to it. With the upgraded shotgun, uh, that's like literally no damage. I was hoping for at least one more weak spot hit. That's fine. Oh, hold on. Uh, the thing about the invisibility is it does stop the auto shooting, like the auto tracking. So you do have to aim manually. And as Street Bat Guy said earlier, we fire faster when we're manually aiming anyway. And if you can't... Um if you can't 
hit his weak spot while you're manually aiming there. Sometimes he can leap at you and you can heat snipe him out of the air to kind of flip him on his back, you know, like the first boss in Akiyama's part. But uh, he he doesn't always do that and there's not really a big opening to actually get that heat snipe off properly. Yeah, so it's, unfortunately. Meh. He, as you saw at the start of the fight, usually, even on like easy, he'll just rush you. As I said, we don't have enough shotgun ammo. I'm just going to get some more. <laughs> Uh, we want Daigo to be on back me up. Daigo, don't shoot that aggro. Oh, I might shoot that aggro. Fucking fine. <laughs> uh, aggro was not in a good place. So, storyline wise, uh, Majin Magoro just got bit by a zombie. Majin Magoro is infected. Daigo actually didn't get the aggro. He did that one. Uh, that's the aggro fight music going on. Have fun, Daigo. Because I'm just going to leave. <laughs> Is I'm, he actually I'm just shooting them, or is he just running too close to them? Because he's, running too close also sets it off. He is shooting them. I, I hear oh, him. Oh, Christ. Uh, at this point, I was going to put him on attack. I'm going to let him do what he wants. <laughs> so this bit, I'm still kind of curious. Like, there's going to be the exact same bit later on in the run here. Uh, the flamethrower that I just passed is really good for this bit, but I'm not sure if uh, it's that, that's another lucky drop. Oh, hey, uh, I'm going to run away from you. Um... The flamethrower is really good for normal zombies. It's not great for special infected. So, oh, there's two of them. Hello! Please, no. <laughs> Thank you. No. <laughs> Please. Stay over there. Please fight my homeless friend. Uh, this homeless man is taking us to Purgatory, by the way. Another long-term location in the Yakuza games. Tell you what, I will actually take this flamethrower now, because we've dealt with a couple of them. Uh, excuse you, but I actually think he needs to die. If he's the one from the end here, he does. But yeah, the flamethrower is really, really good. It's actually really good on Dead Souls as well, because like all the zombies like just gather up, and we just... Imagine we're walking through the sewers with a flamethrower. You know, video games. You... Flamethrower is actually pretty good on uh, Monkey Boys as well, because it kind of stun locks them in a weird way. Uh, at least from what I found. Yeah, I kind of wanted to fight the Monkey Boy with the flamethrower, but it didn't actually get anywhere near to me, so that's not ideal. Uh, do you mind? I'm trying to get my shotgun out. So at this point, there's only like certain like small zombies. You are the one that has to die. <laughs> like at this point, it is definitely the one that has to go. Uh, and then the rest of zombies. I don't think this is one of them, but they can fall all the way back here. This is why this bit is kind of a problem because you have to kill all of them. That's like multiple blocks of steels right there. <laughs> We're definitely good. That bit is just it's rough because you have to kind of like keep all the zombies in certain areas. 415 is not great. Um. You want around a four minute for that one. It's But the problem is, obviously, with the zombies just kind of, you know, spawning in, like, in specific areas, like we were saying earlier, they'll keep spawning in in specific areas until you've gotten through that little bit's, like, entire zombie spawn. That's something that's going to come up in the last character section in about, like, an hour or about two hours from now, actually. Ugh. <laughs> it's fine, I believe. Uh, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> So, Daigo pretends this is his first time in Purgatory. One, it's not. Two, Majima was there at the time. Uh, but obviously with Majima obviously being bitten by the zombie, he's now starting to worry about getting infected. This guy's going to tell us about some zombie serum. <laughs> what a surprise. What a twist. It's not real. The zombie serum, that is. So, obviously that leads into a sub-story that you can do. But that's all the way down there. And we're actually going to leave via these sewers on the left here. If you saw the sewer system in Yakuza 4, it's pretty complete in this game as well. Uh, there's just some areas you can't get through because of obviously the infected parts and the zombie parts. And we meet again, another good old Yakuza NPC, the florist, who still doesn't know how to put a shirt on. Uh, but the florist, for those of you who don't know, he has surveillance cameras all over the city with help from the homeless. And basically, we think the Omi are up to no good, and that guy on the left should seem pretty familiar if you played Yakuza 2. I don't know if I can do this boss well. <laughs> this boss without the uh, upgraded shotgun is kind of a pain. But yeah, that is Ryuji Goda, uh, chairman of the Goryu clan. Uh, next to him is one of his lieutenants called Nikaido, who is exclusive to this game. Once again, it's because character, do not steal. So essentially, Daigo has told Majima, don't do anything stupid, stay right here. Here comes the bad influence Akiyama, who was going to say to Majima for no real reason, you want to go play some baseball? There's definitely not the baddie there. So Majima what does he says, think let's this go is? play some baseball. <laughs> Yakuza 5? Gosh. 
Gosh. <laughs> actually, the, the fun fact, um, this is actually the only, in the video games, this is the only interaction between uh, Akiyama and Majima. Right here. And unfortunately, it's not canon. <laughs> As long as I'm not misremembering anything. Um, but yeah, this is the sewers where you can go fishing in Yakuza 4 and 5. Cough. <laughs> yes, you can go fishing down here. But essentially, this is the last time, obviously, we're in Kamurocho with Majima. It's his fourth part. So, essentially, it's not worth going all the way to Kamiyama to upgrade the shotgun for one boss fight. Uh, we have... One of the best QTEs in any Yakuza game coming up at the end of this fight. I hope you're excited. I wasn't on PB pace, I'd show the failure. But <laughs> I'm very much on PB pace right now. But this next fight, this next fight helps a lot if you have uh, Majima's upgraded shotgun. Uh, Majima's upgraded shotgun does way more damage and holds two more shots. Uh, we can still do this fight without the upgraded shotgun. But essentially, we're going to come here and we're going to find Nikaido. Uh, we're going to find their grand master plan is they want to get revenge at Kiryu Kazuma. I, again, I don't know who that guy is. Never heard of him. Again, try and guess where the weak spot is. You'll never guess. I'm going to concentrate on this fight so I can go first. <laughs> uh, that's understandable because this Suchigumo, I don't even know how to pronounce it right, is uh, that's right, yeah. probably one of the... Probably the second most annoying boss. Uh, technically, I'd say so. Because um, there is a boss coming up in the next character's part, which is probably the worst in the game, although there have been recent ways to make that a bit more consistent. Uh, but this boss, it, he just tries to shiv you, he tries to cut you with his lovely little cockroach talons. I don't know, he, he's weird. Um, if you're lucky and if he goes after Akiyama, you can kind of shoot at him from the side to try and get a few shots in his weak spot. Two of these are rare. Two of these are very rare. And yeah, when he does that, it, it's easy street. But even when um, even when that happens, you don't have that much time to shoot his weak spot. Um, so when he's flailing on the ground, you better hope you get decent shots in because it's still hard to aim at that weak spot because of his surrounding shell in a weird way. And he also is a big fan of uh, somersaults. <laughs> not getting that many weak spot hits. Did you just teleport towards me? Excuse you. Don't do that. <laughs> But he's going to get extra attacks now, like his normal attack is going to be a two-hit attack, which I don't actually think I've seen there in this, in this fight yet today. Uh, if you get to his side, you can sometimes get an auto-hit on the weak spot, but if you're actually looking at him like this, you can also get very lucky and get it as well. He's also a lot faster now, as you can see. One thing i found for um, if you're shooting at him from the front is if you aim slightly below the weak spot, um, it sometimes has the buckshot or the pellets like go kind of in between the shells and hit the weak spot. Sometimes that's good if you're facing him from the front, but again, this this boss is just all over the place, so... Could happen to anyone, this really. This is not great. Yeah. Hey, here's the QTE. Enjoy. This is how you play baseball. That's a grenade. That's how grenades work, folks. <laughs> Please do not try this at home. <laughs> oh, Shinado would be proud. <laughs> it's one of the best QTs in the entire series, and it is relegated to Dead Souls. Not many people know of it. It is so good. It's just so good. It is the kind of the epitome of what Majima is. Let's be honest. <laughs> Now we get to now we get to the annoying chapter. Not because there's a lot of hard things in it, although there are a couple of hard things in it, but mostly because it's the second longest chapter in the entire in the entire run. And uh, oh, uh, there's one thing that this chapter does over and over and over again that is infuriating every single time. I'm gonna have to do it four times. And essentially, storyline-wise, a certain Ryuji Goda turns up. Uh, 
he says to Nikaido that he doesn't want to get revenge on Kiryu Kazuma. And Nikaido is just like, uh, well, I'll just do it myself then. And, yeah, sure. All right. Fine. <laughs> And if you look closely, you might spot something off about Ryuji if you played Kiwami 2 or Yakuza 2. Yeah. See if Ryuji's, you can spot it. Ryuji's gotten an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> Ryuji's gotten a big upgrade. <laughs> it's never fully explained either. We, we meet the person that did this, but we never get an explanation. <laughs> so, if you look at Ryuji's right arm, it's a minigun. <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's a big minigun. Uh, I'm trying to pay attention if any of these don't die. You should be the last one, actually. It's a shame I ran out of ammo. Uh, I think I focused a little too much on the right-hand side. The good part about this, though, and having one zombie left, is I now have full ammo for the next fight, which is good. I can hopefully do this next fight quite fast now. I have played Yakuza 2. I will also be playing Yakuza 2 on another GDQ hotfix in two days' time. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> very, very scared. <laughs> Mark your calendars, folks. Yeah, it can be racing tap in uh, tap doing yak as a free. Yak as a two is one of the hardest any percent runs of the series. One of them. Not just the only one. I'd say OG2, OG1 also is uh, pretty tough. But as we leave, if for some reason there's a note by Hasegawa here to, you know, to do the missions. Uh, the missions are actually for Ryuji 2 coming up in the next chapter. Also, for some reason in Dead Souls, Ryuji's, uh, I'd like. Sideburn game is like really strong. Those things are literally all over the place. Uh, there's two zombies alive there. Ah, oh, I missed some, that's a shame. Uh, the crawlers are going to be a problem because I can't progress until they're all dead, which should be you. Let's have the shots, which should be fine here. Uh, there's someone going to get harassed by zombies here. We're going to stop them. Uh, this, Rudy's part has undergone probably... Probably the biggest... You are alive over there. The biggest amount of changes uh, in this run over the past couple of months. Um, we went through a phase of just using his minigun, which is obviously his unique weapon. Note as well, his minigun right now is a hand. It, it's it's a robot hand. It turns into a minigun. Uh, if you're wondering... I mean, he's he's the former leader of the Goryu clan. If you're wondering what Ryuji's up to these days, uh, he makes Takayaki. That's a man who makes Takayaki into a minigun for an arm. Actually, you'll, you'll see why soon. But essentially, even on this chapter, that ammo count at the top, yeah, it's nowhere near enough. So I'm just going to take, you know, all of this. And we're going to one of the destroyed Tojo offices. So Ryuji's currently on a mission to try and figure out, like, because Nikaido is Omi, Ryuji kind of thinks, you know, he kind of needs to, like, actually help out here with what's happened. Hope I can break this desk. Good. Avoid the aggro. You can break the desk on that first charge. You can get through this next charge and don't have to do another one. Uh, this room, it just sucks. Uh, there's no there's no good way to do this room. Remember when I said earlier there's certain rooms that have like really like strong and like really high HP valued zombies? Yeah, this room. Uh, Dead Souls difficulty, you can get infinitely stun locked in this room. Uh, for Dead Souls difficulty, <laughs> what we do is we grab the chair on the right there and we swing. We swing very fast because every zombie obviously is like hyper aggro and just comes to kill you straight away. And yeah, I've, I've died to an infinite combo here. Someone's alive. It's you. Also, good. That actually wasn't too bad. Uh, usually that's kind of like... Actually, that's kind of more painful than that. So I'm actually okay with that. Sometimes on easy difficulty, I'll grab the chair myself and I'll use it if there's like a good congregation of zombies. But at this point, there wasn't. So... Just standing there shooting. That's all I could really do. But there's a lot of there's a lot of things in Muji's first chapter that are just kind of frustrating for us as runners. That room there, due to you know zombies that survive, but also the bit that's coming up here. Both but me and Street Bat Guy do not like this next bit. <laughs> oh, no, th this is probably the bane of anyone who runs Ryuji's part, just because you got to keep constantly checking your surroundings and just make sure that you get it all in one clean sweep. It, it's just a Royal pain. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I know the six zombies in this bit. Now, the the soldiers can actually also kind of, like, not get the kill and knock the zombie down. That should be good, actually. They actually got oh, one alive. That's a shame. They actually got two kills there. Um, because... Actually, they got one kill, because there's six zombies in that one, so I'm keeping an eye on the kill count and the zombies go down, obviously. So I'm hoping to know which zombies are alive. But the problem is this bit. Uh, this is something that Street Bat Guy alluded to, like, a lot earlier in just now. 
This is Fiat Square. We have to clear the entire the entirety of Fiat Square of normal zombies, special infected. But the problem is Fiat Square has a lot of spawn points. The current area where we're standing is going to be one of those, and zombies are going to keep respawning here for a very long time. Uh, even though I've got a couple of them, there's a guaranteed cutie girl drop here that I'm going to grab. And then I'm actually going to go this way. You can see the frames are dropping even with the camera pan down, but this is to help it a little bit more. Certain guns in this game can lower the FPS, including Mucci's minigun. But I'm just going to get in this bulldozer. I'm going to hopefully hit some of these special infected. Uh, ideally, the two crybabies in this bit. Because they're going to keep summoning in zombies if they're alive. That actually All works out quite well. All I'm going to say is thank God for that bulldozer, because that makes this part a little less painful. Yes. This is a very good, with all the special infected, this is a very good part if you're missing some of those blocks of steel or scrap iron to try and farm up some of those materials. There's a couple of bits like this in the run, like Majima's bit in front of uh, Camera Tree Hills. You also need to... How did you not get stunned? Wow, that's impressive, actually. Good. There's the other one. <laughs> There's two in this bit. Also, uh, something we haven't mentioned yet, because it's actually going to become a problem in this chapter. Uh, your allies can actually block bullets. You'll die. So zombies that fall on their front like that and are missing a limb, they are actually guaranteed to die. They will 100% die. It just takes them time. But usually at the moment, this is the way that I do this bit, is I just come back here. And provided no one else spawns in... Oh, they're still alive, actually. Wait, hold on. I'm just going to make sure. Someone's alive. Oh, hey. There you go. Because <laughs> they start spawning in there, so it's like, someone around here is still walking. <laughs> it's that guy. So, thankfully, all the walking dead are now gone in that area. <sighs> that's, a, that's a rough bit, just because, again, they can just keep spawning behind you. It's not really worth staying at the start of Fiat Square either, because if you do and the crybabies start doing stuff, uh, then they'll actually start, like, they'll actually start, like, summoning zombies and stuff. So... Ryuji needs to get back to his pops. So, his pops is the takoyaki maker. He's learned how to make takoyaki from his pops. Ryuji's got one idea of how to get back to Kamurocho. Now, this is where we fought the Onraki with Majima. Do you remember that fight? <clears throat> Do you remember what we used in that fight? <laughs> oh, Ryuji. <laughs> oh, Ryuji. <sighs> Ryuji's great plan is to blow a hole in the dividing wall that is keeping the zombies out of Kamurocho with the tank. Because of course it is. Ryuji's not one for subtlety. Thankfully, there's no actual tank shell in the tank. That's a problem for us. Because that's going to extend this chapter by about another 10 minutes. <laughs> and unfortunately, oh you can't have a shell in the tank, even if you load it. We have to do this. I'm going to do a big level up here, actually. I'm going to get headlock on, which gets better head tracking. Uh, I'm going to get... Oh, Demolition Man. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to go into basic, upgrade my armor skill twice. I'll explain why I do this in the next chapter. I'm going to get a bunch of inventory slots. Uh, 18 or 20 is good. i do one more. That's good. Even though you didn't get it here, but got it earlier, the main reason we get super grip in any percent is mainly Ooh. for not this special infected, but the one that's introduced shortly after. And you'll see why in a sec. Once again, Valve, do not, do not, do not, please. This is a Diptera. They, uh, they spit at us. <laughs> it's fine. These ones fly. Spitters don't fly. There's enough creative liberty this time. But yeah, I didn't take all the minigun ammo. That's on purpose. I want to have a as little ammo as possible at the end of this chapter. Because uh, that's when we're going to stop using... Uh, the minigun. But take note of these containers. You'll get to see them a couple of times. Uh, their position is important for something that happens later on. The final special infected. The Hermit. Uh, the, the lore of these guys is actually great. The, these guys were shut-ins uh, during the like the zombie infection that just built up their like area of shut-ins so much they just got rocks around them. Uh, cool. <laughs> Alright. Also, yeah, that's why we got Super Grip, just to one-shot the Hermit. That's mm. literally the only reason. <laughs> Although there are other places where it could potentially be useful, but we just haven't really kind of sorted that out yet. Like, found yeah. decent ways for it to be more useful. 
It's been so long that I actually forgot. The reason why we use that on the Hermit as well, you saw the FPS drop at the end. If you shoot the FPS, uh, if you shoot the armor off of the Hermit, uh, the FPS drops like the Onraki. So, yeah, that's why you want to make sure that, obviously, they die. You don't need to kill all these behind us, just the ones in front. My ammo usage was bad before this, so I have to reload. Hopefully get all three of them knocking down. Good. Very good. So, you only need to kill zombies in this alleyway, the others don't matter. So, it's escort section time. We met a man called Ibiki, who runs the Honest Living Association, something that was introduced in, I believe, Yakuza 3, uh, where he takes uh, Yakuza members and reforms them into, you know, proper upright standing citizens, blah, blah, blah. Um, about this escort section, uh, we only have to walk to the door. We don't have to get them to this place, which is wonderful. That's a wonderful escort section. Let's do it again three more times and not have that luxury anymore. Oh boy. Um, and also if you are somehow low on money at this point as well, there is another cute girl figure in that uh, alleyway that the survivors grown up. Um, it's just a nice little thing to take note of, if just in case you need it really. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's two of them. Uh, there's that one there, and there's also one next to the forklift. But if we were to go to the forklift now, it wouldn't be there anymore. You have to do it before you go to the HLA. It's weird how that one despawns, but the other one doesn't. I don't know why. Dead souls. So bizarre. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that works. Are you going to notice me push into the sign of the bike here? This is on purpose. I want them out of the way. Out of the way. <laughs> that sign's going to be a problem. It's fine. I'll go first. So... It's time for three more escort sections now. If these two would like to play nice today, I'd appreciate it. These two sometimes just decide to kill all the zombies, so I'm glad they actually didn't this time. Uh, and again, there's going to be zombie spawns like in front of us. There's a lot, so I'm just going to try and stop all the zombies from getting to them. And then hopefully they will come with us. They might get caught by that one, actually, because that was a yeah, first spawn. Yeah, they, they yeah, because the members, they like fighting zombies. You're actually going to fight that zombie, aren't you? No, good. I'm going to get stuck on that. Oh, good. Okay, this one's okay. This, this escort was okay. Uh, we don't get a spawn here, which is nice. Again, you're going to see those containers a couple of times. That man got stuck on that sign. <laughs> Basically, I'm looking at the mini-map to give me an indication of how this escort is going. Now, we don't have the luxury of just taking them to the door. If you see the lamppost, uh, the green lamppost on the side, there's one uh, behind us right now. There's no visual indicator of the zone where you need to bring the escort target, but actually there is. It's the lampposts. If you get the escorts in between those lampposts, then you can get them into the HLA. Downside, you can only do one escort group at a time. That's why we're having to go back this way again. Eh, this zombie will be there on the way back, it'll be fine. We there's a there's a strap for the Dead Souls difficulty uh, where you grab that motorbike and you put it here specifically for a certain uh, zombie spawn. Uh, I'm going to try something a little different. I've been doing in runs lately. That's actually been working out. Um, Ooh, new strap. Yeah, actually, that's only my hundred page shot. Oh wow. Um, I'd also like to shout out the Dead Souls runners because the Dead Souls runners had a. Oh, I saw that cutie girl figure. I'm gonna have to get that on the way back. <laughs> you know, I got plenty. I got plenty. That's fine. Um, I'd like to shout out the Dead Souls runners uh, because the the Dead Souls runners, when they did the work on the Dead Souls uh, difficulty run, just basically opened up a whole realm of possibilities that we haven't thought about for the any percent that have made this run like a lot nicer and a heck of a lot more fun. Uh, those runners are Pandemonium and also Meta Meta. Uh, Meta Meta also did a vast majority of the LAD route, and Panda, who's also doing a lot of OG2 runs at the moment. So many thanks to both of them for their routing of the Dead Souls difficulty of this, because a lot of their stuff that they did, we now do in the any percent, but we have a little extra leeway because of, obviously, again, the missions. But going this way, I'm hoping to avoid the monkey boy that spawned to the right. There's going to be a big spawn here. This spawn is actually based on the NPCs. Well, that's sign. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, I, I love the physics in this game sometimes, honestly. <laughs> here I'm intentionally staying here to shoot these zombies that are spawning in. Uh, one person got grabbed. I see them. Uh, it doesn't matter if they lose their HP or keep their HP, but we just need them to come with us. Should hopefully be good enough. So again, I'm keeping on my minimap. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Y'all. Y'all. Let me come back there. What are you doing? <laughs> What are you doing? Cool, thanks, great. Losing time. <laughs> uh, yeah, because of Dead Souls. This, es this is the hardest of all the escorts. It's kind of painful. So you see, this is the other lamppost I was talking about. So if I stay here, they're going to run into the area without going too far. That bike has just gotten in the way. Thanks for kicking that the soldier that actually, you know, helped you out, bud. <laughs> Appreciate that. 
You can see our ammo is getting quite low. That's actually important for the next chapter. We need a relatively free inventory. Yeah, and these escort missions are pretty much why this chapter in particular is the longest in the game, just because this part takes a while, combined with the forklifts and obviously Theatre Square. The rest before that isn't as bad, but it's a lot of the time babysitting the AI here, it, it, it's just pain. How does that not count as the guy in the back being in the area? How dare you? <laughs> but yeah, uh, with that last one, you can sometimes get exceptionally lucky and have them just run past all the zombies. Uh, no such luck on Dead Souls difficulty. <laughs> but thankfully, yeah, they're on easy difficulty. You can sometimes get very lucky. Sometimes one of them can get stuck on a lamppost around the corner and not move until you walk back to him. Happened the other day. <laughs> but now we have a forklift key. So... It's time to introduce you all to the impossible puzzle. We need to get a forklift through this gap, as well as having a tank shell. And Yak of the Dead Souls solution is currently impossible. So, doesn't matter if we get the ammo or not. I'd appreciate not having it for the extra inventory space, but it's fine. So, once again, more Shenmue comparisons. We're going to drive... Uh, Wonderful forklift. Uh, this puzzle has actually a very quick solution, which is going to be to grab this container here. And we're going to just put this one on the one on the left. Even though we want to get both the forklift and the tank shell through, the actual solution is to just get the forklift through. And you'll see why. Again, as I said earlier, keep an eye on the layout for this bit. I'm going to try reversing into a good position here, because if you get into a bad position, uh, you actually reverse even more here. I that was okay. Yeah, that was okay. Yeah, it's very finicky about, oh, you want to pick this up? Oh, wait, you're not perfectly aligned. Oh, let me just waste some time getting you there. It's, oh, it's It's terrible. It's actually terrible. And then as we put this here, as we reverse again, pay very close attention to the container layout. So pay close attention to that. That's going to come up in like 30 seconds. If you reverse here, good. Sometimes I accidentally Austin powers that. Uh, now, if you look at the top left, uh, the forklift has a HP bar and a fuel gauge. Fuel gauge, not a problem. HP bar, a problem. Uh, we've taken all that damage from six or like eight zombies there on easy difficulty. If you're on Dead Souls difficulty, you cannot make it through this bit. Well, that was a good angle. Uh, you cannot make it through this bit by just ramming through zombies. The forklift will explode, and that's a game over. So, at least we have that going for us in the any percent for easy is because we can just drive... I listen to the beeps intentionally here to know when I have to reverse. Good, good. But you'll see all the damage we're going to take here from these zombies as well. With Dead Souls difficulty, the nice thing is, as we were saying earlier about the zombie spawns, they're in fixed locations. So we know when to get out of the forklift and deal with them. Hey, what happened to the containers on the left? The game oh. erases two of them. <laughs> uh, thanks to that random zombie as well for kicking an explosive barrel towards you. That was... Very nice of him. That that can get you a game over on Dead Souls difficulty. Had that happen before. <laughs> let's see if I can get the uh, let's see if I can get the forklift flip. That might be good. Yeah. <laughs> if you drive on the right hand side where there's some rubble, when you go to put the uh, tank shell in, uh, the forklift can go upside down like that. Uh, one of these days, that's gonna soft lock me. I guarantee it. <laughs> I should stop doing that if I'm being brutally honest. <laughs> And back to the original idea of blowing a hole in the wall. Also, you can actually refill the tank in this cutscene. You can hear it. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, street bad guy. Uh, you might have to actually narrate the next bit while I concentrate, because it's, uh, as you know, it's big menu time. <laughs> oh, that's, that's fine. Uh, this is uh, pretty much where all of the changes... Well, not all of them, but most of the changes in Ryuji's part actually come into play. Now, you know those points that we were gathering for Hasegawa throughout Akiyama and Majima's parts? We're going to spend them here. And we're going to spend them on specific things for her. And we're also going to do a little bit of shopping while we're at it. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll save a little bit of that until we get there. But for now... Ryuji's just unleashed havoc on the rest of Kamurocho because he was bored, I guess. He just wanted to get out. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So, he's now free. 
That is actually technically kind of true, because he just doesn't want to find the way out, so he blows a hole in the, in the safe part. <laughs> Why? Ah, oh, Ryuji things. Who knows? <laughs> okay, so... The good thing is, we oh. have to go to Cafe Alps. Uh, that is a lot of points. <laughs> <It is>. um, <laughs> um, and what you see there was through getting quite a lot of... What, are they gold plates in this? Yeah, they're gold yes, plates. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Sarge's gift. And those are going to be important in a little bit once we get to Kamiyama. Um, and once we exit Cafe Alps, we're just going to stick to the right side of the street for a little bit longer and then cross over. Um, and because we stuck to the right side of the street, we uh, avoided a substory that was in the middle of that whole street. And that would waste you quite a lot of time. Also here, uh, Fizz and Magic Jersey. This will be important as well, coming up to Kamiyama. Because this will give us an actual speed boost going forward. Do you want to admit, or do I want to admit, it took us three years until the Dead Souls Runners to realize there was a shirt that increased our movement speed by 20%. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping not to go into that, but okay. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, we 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 found it out within the last few months, so it's fine. It's fine. Also, this guy's here. He's a sub story. Well, he's not a sub story, but he's a partner uh, that you can get. We just say get rid of him, and then we go about our day. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to sell the gold plates and the cutie girl figures. Uh, if you have any, just because it's a good bit of money. And then investing in Kamiyama's place twice gives us the option to modify certain things that we couldn't before investing. So we are going to be upgrading the Fizz and Magic jersey that we just bought from Don Quixote. Um, and we are going to modify that into the Sprinter shirt, which will give us... Is it a 10% or 20% speed boost? An extra boost? 10, yeah. Extra 10, yeah. A 10% speed boost whilst we're in the quarantine zone. Um, we are also going to upgrade some weapons here. So we are going to upgrade the hunting shotgun to the Pathmaker. And this was a this was an idea that I had, um, I think, of just getting the shotgun without upgrading the Gatling gun because we used to upgrade the Gatling gun. Um, but but then we stopped because it, it really wasn't used that much to be honest um, and also while we're here we'll be buying some toughness ZZs and stamina and XXs because they help modify the oh is it Fizz and Magic jersey I'm tired so sorry if I'm getting some stuff wrong but um, uh, that's right yeah and while we're here we'll also buy some ammo because you know you you got to be safe. Um, what I failed to mention... Need uh, the shotgun now? <laughs> I think I just need the shotgun now. Yeah. And what I failed to mention was um, the purchase of the grenade launcher too. That will come in handy coming up. Once we exit Kamiyama's truck, there are specific spots where it's a very good place to use. Uh, we don't want to modify it because the modifications are actually kind of bad compared to the base damage. Um... And soon we'll be getting an upgrade to our abilities called Demolition Expert, unless you've got that already, I can't remember. Okay. Um, good, perfect. Um, which will give us a bit more damage on our grenade launcher rounds. I almost wow. forgot to equip the shirt again. <laughs> Why do I keep doing this? <laughs> uh, it's okay, at least it wasn't in Kiryu's part this time. It's fine. <sighs> <laughs> Oh, I sounded like yeah. I knew what I was talking about for a second there. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely everything. The The menu is a bit... It's a bit all over the place, but if we do it in that order, we don't ever leave the menu for a fourth time and then have to deal with, obviously, the sub-story guy. So you always you always get, like, automatically booted out for after the invest bits, but that's why we do everything after that to make sure, obviously, it's there. But as long as we have the grenade launcher, the upgraded shotgun, which is what the block of steels was for, and the sprinter shirt here, everything good. So... And obviously, as you saw, I bought a lot of ammo. Because this shotgun's getting used. Remember, rooms with zombies with large HP bars? Yeah, notice how two of them are on the floor. Three of them are on the floor without being dead. And you again, I'm just going to kill you. <laughs> that zombie takes a lot of damage to go down, unfortunately. 
I still think this switch to shotgun in this room, though, is still better than the Gatling gun because the Gatling gun yeah. felt a little bit finicky in a weird way. <clears throat> yeah, we used to... So, a couple of the changes we were saying earlier with Ryuji's part, we used to actually upgrade his Gatling gun here, which you do in Dead Souls difficulty runs, but you actually do it twice. Um, but we don't have the... You need to go and get, like, really, really, like, special, like, items for that. Uh, you need to get, like, one more item off of Hasagar as well. Uh, we don't... We could get those items in the 80%, but it didn't really make that much of a difference. But the shotgun does... And the nice thing about the demolition upgrade and this grenade launcher is whenever we come across a hermit like this... Goodbye. Uh, I don't want to be close to you. Also, very important, we don't go down the alleyway next to us. I have no ammo right now. That's bad. Actually, that's kind of good, because that means the... Could you stop? Thank you. <laughs> if I go down this alleyway, it spawns zombies, which is why we want to stay here. Headshot good, because it stops the Diptera. There we go. Now we leave. Uh, the actual the minigun here is actually pretty good uh, for a couple of reasons. This is the champion district. Uh, there's a couple of barricades around that we can just break with the minigun. But there's also Molotov zombies on rooftops that I kind of want to shoot as I go through. And with Molotov zombies, you just have to shoot them like once or twice. You don't actually have to like do that much to them. Unfortunately, I think the one I was trying to shoot is still alive. He's not. Good. You can also shoot Molotovs out of thin air or out of midair, which is like... Amazing. Uh, this is Michiru. She is a Okama in the local area. Her manager of the local bar is on this side. Was he there earlier that we could have saved? No, he's there now. Somehow, he's now sat next to fire as well. It's not exactly the most ideal place. Speaking of fire, I miss this Molotov zombie, which is a shame, because he can knock me down. He decided to do nothing. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, but if I, when I stop reloading here, watch my speed. See how we go, like, obviously, like, a little bit faster? You'll see we're going a lot faster than we were earlier at this point. This is the effect of the Sprinter shirt. It, it's just so much faster. It's so good. It's so, so good. But we've saved, obviously, the manager of the local bar, the Mitchell, obviously, is serving at. And now we can just run back through that area. But thankfully, this time without zombies. Uh, so this is the good time to actually reload all of your guns. Make sure that we got full ammo. We need full ammo, essentially, in the shotgun and obviously the grenade launcher. If you need a rare zombie, look right. He's chilling. He's just there. And then I'm going to use my mini gun to break the barricades a bit faster. You'd think the shotgun would be a bit faster, but actually, you know, the grenade launcher does them in one hit. But as you can see via that barricade there, they're pretty close to where we walk. So if we were to use the grenade launcher, we would hit ourselves. That might actually happen in the next fight anyway. Don't worry about it. Also, also by doing a zombie, oh. that always spawns in that barricade there. And I don't know <laughs> yeah. why. It's just funny. <laughs> it, it's annoying because you can shoot them instead. Uh, but the other reason for using the Gatling gun is that frees up not using any of our shotgun rounds. Ideally, these grenades go all the way to the back there to get, obviously, the special infected and the normal zombies. And when we've killed a couple of them, again, I keep pressing one button here because I would like my shotgun. We're down single FPS again. Actually, the Diptera going that way is very good because, the obviously, the enemies are on the other side now. Oh, I decided to go first person there to save from that happening. Now we have the insulting many, many elastic alloy drops from the fatties again. That's their name. That's, that's all genuinely their name. The, the name of the enemies in this game is a little weird. Excuse you. Uh, if you have a reloaded grenade launcher for this last bit, that can also go fast, as you can see. Please stop getting out the wrong gun. I'm just going to finish him with this gun because he's the last enemy. Yeah, good. Uh, there's a barricade. We can shoot all the way down here. There you go. Good shot. And now reload guns. I'm surprised you shoot the barricades here, to be honest, because what I usually do is I usually kick them because in Little Asia they go down in one shot. Or one kick, sorry. It stops us from having to stop. Yeah, true. Also, we kind of be a jackass to this kid and just say, uh, there may be zombies around, just, you know, hang in there, kid. And then we just leave. <laughs> That's the quickest dialogue option. <laughs> just hang in there, kid. So this cardboard box is speaking to us, so we're going to kill all the zombies in the area. Uh, certain zombies will not spawn in until you've killed, like, all the zombies in the spawn. You're also alive on the left. So if I do knock them down with headshots like that, I am going to move forward just to make sure I can take care of the zombies that are still around. I think one's alive. There is. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Okay, good, they're dead. So... <laughs> This guy is obviously playing a little bit of Metal Gear because he's decided to hide from the zombie invasion in the cardboard box and surprisingly it actually worked. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you, fella. So, with this, we're now going to carry on and get out of Little Asia. Um, and we're going to go and find where our pops is. 
Uh, this guy is being attacked by zombies, so we just... Little Asia is a maze, as you can probably guess. It's hard to navigate at the best of times in these games, but in this game, they block off even more access. Uh, you'd think a grenade launch here is good. Actually, no. Because, again, you can get hit. Unfortunate. I was trying to hope to get that reloaded before the uh, cutscene here, but unfortunately not. Uh, again, a grenade launcher for the next room ain't great, so <laughs> let's not. Because obviously it's a very, very short space. There are two zombies out here that are alive. There you go. Good. Uh, doesn't matter too much if we reload the shotgun here. We want the grenade launcher reloaded. This is the last little bit we have to go through for this chapter. Six zombies in the next room. So we're looking for six kills. Any less is kind of bad. Good stuff. We want to make sure we come out of this chapter with the shotgun reloaded. Very important. Also, I've had the uh, I've had the game soft lock in the next chapter before, so uh, hopefully not. <laughs> and then we get to the RNG boss. Oh baby. <laughs> oh the the RNG boss. Oh. Um, yeah. It is. Wait, is it very frustrating? Is it, the, is it the boss I think you're thinking about? It's pops. <laughs> yep. Sammy's pops. It was it's that. pops. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, even after running this game for quite a while, even I can sometimes get very disorientated in a little Asia. It's that much of a maze, and even though you have a mini map, it's still confusing sometimes. But mm. that's just, eh. nice. I didn't get my next level up, so we lose time at the end of every single every single chapter level up. Every time, obviously, we level up because it's just slow. If we can get the level ups in fights, obviously, it's a bit faster. So ideally, we don't get like two level ups there. We only get the one. So, the nice thing about Ryuji's final two chapters is that they're really short. Uh, they're just boss fights. So, we're going to head over to the local club, Asia, because Nikaido's grand master plan for getting Kiryu back to Kamurocho, like every other Yaks game, is to kidnap Haruka. Oh, what a surprise. And this lovely man's going to give me some grenades, which we're not going to use, but thank you anyway. Appreciate it. So... Again, thanks to the Dead Souls runners, uh, Panda. Uh, Panda found out with her boyfriend that actually, weirdly, in this boss fight, this is Pops, by the way. He makes takoyaki. He's an octopus now. It's symbolic. So, essentially, this guy has actual, like, eight different hitboxes. Uh, you can't hit them during certain parts because they're invulnerable. But fun fact, uh, they actually have variable hitbars. The two tentacles that are in the middle on both sides have less HP than the others. So, during certain attacks, or during any attack, we can't actually attack these tentacles. Also, these benches have a hitbox and they can hit us. The left-hand side tentacles are a lot harder to hit than the right-hand side, which is why I aim for them first. But you can see that with the upgraded shotgun, we can sometimes take that in one shot. Uh, that's going to be that one. Yep. Fun fact, before, uh, before we used the shotgun in this fight, uh, we used Gatling gun, and uh, <laughs> that was painful. <laughs> Because of all the recoil, you'd you'd end up hitting them quite a lot, but you'd also miss quite a lot too. And the amount of times you need to reload, just not worth it. So I, I what? thought, oh, you, you got tentacled, I'm afraid. Now he's doing the long move, load, um, load of rubbish. Oh, this pops is being very annoying. Un. Fortunate, because we can't hit him when he's doing this move, unfortunately. No. Uh, but yeah, within the past couple of months or so, I thought, wait, why are we using the Gatling gun? Why don't we use the shotgun instead? And combined with the fact that the shotgun deals quite a bit of damage, I think this upgrade shotgun deals about 800 damage. And using the HP values that Panda found uh, for each tentacle, we figured out Oh yeah, the middle two tentacles on each side are the lowest health. Why don't we just use a shotgun? Less recoil. Why is he that dropping this system. attack. I actually can't like I actually can't like go to the next phase because he's just doing this attack constantly. This is awful. It's like some of the worst luck I've ever had. I I don't actually know why he's not going to the next phase because he he should be like dropping this attack, but he's actually not. Hmm. There we go. See how long that took. He's gonna hit me. Wow, that's and this, really bad. <laughs> and this is why this is the most annoying boss in the game. 
Oh, that's unfortunate. But wait, there's more. For reference, I was 20 seconds at a world record pace going into that fight. I'm not going to be anymore. <laughs> I now need perfect phase 2 RNG, which... Eel. <laughs> so... Remember Demolition Expert making our explosive attacks stronger? Okay, that's a good start at least. Thanks, Pops. Good first set. I thought I messed up because of the technical sick me. Not the best attack, but I'll take it. It's fine. Oh, hey. I almost almost walked into that. So, as you can see, obviously the grenade launcher hits certain... Are you going to come out? No, you're going to rock. Okay. Well, for a second now, I might be able to get lucky, but... Okay, now it's gone. So, when you get to pots to 1 HP, even though we don't have any heat, you'll see we get a free heat attack here. You have to finish the fight off like this. Um, if, with, the, with the first attack, which is the one you want to see, there's multiple tentacles that come out of, obviously, the hole in the same place. All of those hitboxes are overlapping with one another, and the grenade launcher explosion obviously does damage to all of them. This is the reason why you want to see that attack in particular. So we got kind of lucky with the first attack, but we got very unlucky with the first phase. The first phase was terrible. I've not had a pops go that badly for uh, quite some time. Ooh. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is unfortunate. And it kind of sucks, too, because this is like, what, an hour, 40 minutes into the run, too? So you're like, ugh. Really pops this again. You don't not really want to <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> not the worst reset point, as we both know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't, don't worry, folks. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Oh, boy. Okay, we have one more chapter for Ryuji, which can go quite badly, can go quite fast. Um, a little bit of luck here. Uh, as I said, Ryuji's last two chapters are just boss fights, and you might be thinking after a unique boss fight like that, what's the amazing boss fight we're now going to get? Yeah, we're just going to get the Onraki again with two Arrow Habakis. So, <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, the Grenade Launcher does very, very well in this next fight, if, especially if the Arrow Habakis like, stay together. So, I know my Grenade Launcher doesn't have a shell currently loaded, that carries over from the previous fight to this next one, so I kind of was hoping that I would have reloaded before the end, but with uh, that fight not going well, I kind of just obviously went and just went straight to shotgun phase. I should have reloaded the grain launcher, but oh well. It's fine. We can do it here. Uh, the Onraki is going to start off by throwing something at us. It's like guaranteed that he'll always throw something at the start of the fight. Uh, the guy actually tracks your movement, which is kind of terrible. Uh, hopefully he doesn't use an explosive barrel, because that will lose me time. These two will run at me, so I'm going to run back whilst I reload. It is an explosive barrel! Thanks, friend. I hit it in midair with the grenade launcher shot. Goodbye, frame rate. Perfect marksman of all work. So we have to be careful of him whilst he's obviously throwing stuff. He has another, thanks, couple of uh, attacks he can do. Now, I can see the other one in the middle of the street. He's actually next to this one. If I can get like a good angle, that's fine. You're gone. He is doing his ground slam, so I have to be a bit careful here. I might stop it from hitting me. Yeah, nice. Appreciate that. This one on the right is on 1 HP, so I'm just going to focus on the one by the Unraki for now. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> oh, actually, you're the one that has a lot. That's good. Dodge that. Yeah, this fight can also be annoying. Not as annoying as Pops, but it, it can still be a pain, especially if the arrow back east just jump all over the place and the Unraki just doesn't stop throwing stuff at you. I was going to say, that's going to hit me, that's fine. Uh, I will use the either the shotgun or the Gatling gun to break through the chest here, but the shotgun is obviously better damage. Could we not do the charge attack? Please? Just punch me once? I just I just want to get punched. To Yakas again? We, we like punching here? Goodbye, frame rate. Oh, nice. Nice thing about the low frame rate is you can actually time your dodge better. <laughs> That was, that was okay. I've had a lot better than that. I've had a lot worse than that. <laughs> and again, having the level up here is nice because it can stop you having the level up uh, in the end bit of the actual fight, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was okay. That was, that was not too bad. Yeah, 118 isn't too bad. It's actually, if you get lucky and you have both the Arabakis together, they just go down to the grenade launcher. It's fantastic. Really fantastic. Uh, I do have the points for rapid reload now, which is good. Uh, so, somebody asked earlier, where's Kazuma Kiryu? Ah, well, <laughs> about that. About that. 
because our fourth and final playable character is good old Kiryu. Now, obviously, Nikaido has kidnapped Haruka. This, uh, Dead Souls does one thing really well. It's characters and characterization. Um, Gary Buster Holmes scales a building in a substory, which is fantastic. Majima is loving the zombie outbreak, as you would expect he would. Kiryu gets to Kamurocho, and the media and the army recognize him. And they get out of his way. See, I told you all this was a Yaks game. See? We're doing the punches. We're doing the punches. Because, ironic, not ironic plot, actual design here, Kiryu doesn't want to kill the zombies. Well, I mean, he wants to punch them. But he doesn't want to actually, like, use guns and kill the zombies because he sees them as, you know, people. Kiryu's about to find out that's not going to go very well. So, in this bit, the... Trigger is literally knocking down zombies to the floor and then them getting up. So if we can get if we can get like attacks on the floor when the zombies are like not gonna stand up, we can get them up a bit faster. So if we can do that near the end when it's like the last one or two, then that will save us a tiny bit of time. But otherwise, yeah, Kiryu, Kiryu here is one of his angriest in the series. It's fantastic. And like literally the media in the army recognizes that and they're just like, no, get out of his way. No, let him go. He, he's gonna do his thing. Which, yes, we are. We're going to be punching some zombies. So, again, we do this again. Uh, this bit's a little worse playing than most Yakuza games because the lock on system uses Dead Souls, uh, like, kind of like sideways system. So, you can't properly lock on to zombies. You should be the last one if I do this. Yep. Look at that. Made it go a little faster. So, essentially, now Kiryu's realizing I can't punch zombies to death. So, he gets saved by a Japan self defense force soldier, uh, Asagi. And she's going to basically be, here's a gun, shoot them, idiot. Kiryu's going to be like, no, they're people, I'm not going to shoot them. We need a story hook to get Kiryu to finally shoot zombies. You might remember about an hour and 30 minutes ago, you met a man named Nagahama in Akiyama's part. Oh dear. <laughs> a oh, man that yeah. only talked about Kiryu. I remember that guy. He was great, wasn't he? How do you think he's doing right now? I don't know. I think we. I think we're going to see a lot more of him in the oh, future. You know. No, oh, no, that's not good. So again, here, even though he's going to have a HP bar, it's just getting him to the ground, getting him back up again. That's the fastest way to do it. So poor Naghammer has become a zombie. That's actually, actually a genuinely tearful scene. So if I delay my, oh, I missed. If you delay your punch, you can actually like get him on the way up. But yeah, it's just about getting him to the ground, then kicking him to get him up faster. You'd think it would be like draining his HP bar. Nah, no, it's just it's just this like. I've done both where I've drained like his full HP bar before combo. I've missed twice. That's really bad on my part. <laughs> but as you can see, the targeting is literally Dead Souls. It's 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 not normal yak as a like lock on to an enemy targeting. It's different. It, it doesn't work as well for obviously this bit, which you know makes sense because this isn't the entire game. The game is shooting zombies. But that's Kiryu's first part. Note to self: don't forget the shirt. <laughs> I swear. If you forget it, I will remind you. Don't worry. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> so, basically, most of Camarocho now is infected. There's only a couple of areas that aren't infected. So, the nice thing is, again, Kamiyama's truck has moved around a bit, and he's actually right next to us. With Kamiyama's truck, we can actually go and get everything that we've got so far. So, our pretty shotgun, the uh, sprinter shirt, etc., Hasegawa comes along and, like, Hasegawa wants zombies killed for, you know, the research points and stuff. And again, Kiryu doesn't really like that. <laughs> These two aren't exactly friends. So, fun fact. Everybody gets their unique weapon very early on. Akiyama's is his dual pistol. Majima's is obviously his shotgun. Ryuji is his Gatling gun arm. We don't get Kiryu's until the finale. I have to make do until then. But we're going to go to our item box. We're going to move items. I'm going to move over a lot of shotgun ammo. Uh, all of our grenade launch that we can. The sprinter shirt. And then I'm going to go to weapons and bring over the grenade launcher and the shotgun. And I'm going to remember to equip everything, aren't I? Yes, I am. I'm going to put on the grenade launcher and then I'm going to put on the shotgun and then I'm going to put on the shirt. That makes me go 20% faster. Because I've done that a couple of times where I've done this run and forgot to put that shirt on. It's been more times <laughs> than I'd like to admit. Uh, what... <laughs> Well, while you're equipping those weapons, by the way, you want to keep the left D-pad slot free, just because whatever's there will be replaced by the anti-material rifle in the finale. 
That's a very good point. Very, very good point. That's why I've been trying to put, like, every time we have the shotgun, I've been trying to put it onto right D-pad just to, you know, have it there for, obviously, when we get to Kyrie as well. Uh, again, the ammo that we have left in the guns carries over to this bit. Uh, I believe my grenade launcher is reloaded, so we should be good. But we're going to put on our path maker. This ammo is fine for this chapter. Now, we don't need a taggy to stay close to us. The nice thing about our NPC partners is we don't need them to survive outside of them, like, surviving when their, like, area triggers, like, um, Nag Hammer Wars back in Akiyama's chapter. Uh, you'll also see, even with panning the camera down here, the FPS is still going to drop, but with the, with the fast shirt on, we can just run past these zombies really fast. If we start to reload or we start to shoot, we actually obviously slow down, so that's the reason why I'm not going to be doing any of that until I desperately have to. Uh, this area below the Millennium Tower is only available in Dead Souls. It's kind of nice. Uh, and there can be zombies that spawn in the way, so we'll deal with them when the time comes. This is fine. Uh, weaving and stuff. Just a general Friday night in Camarocha, really, this. Pretty much. <laughs> I'm stuck on the door again. Uh, the hitbox for your characters gets a bit wider with a shotgun equipped because for some reason I think the weapon like is also included. Uh, there is a wild top zombie there, but he he missed, thankfully. Uh, I think I'll get some grenade launch ammo just in case because I'm going to need a lot for these next couple of chapters considering what we do in the next chapter now. Oh, yeah. And especially if you miss some of those launches yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely 40 is not enough. I'd like near like 75. Is it a grenade launcher I need next? Yes, it is actually. So I keep this on. I have to remember, because we don't actually do, like, we're going to go back to Kamurocho Hills again. We're trying to find, trying to find survivors. We're trying to find Daigo Dojima. Because once again, Daigo is... I do you know where Daigo is. Actually, we do know where Daigo is. He's in Purgatory. Of course, Daigo's in Purgatory. Oh, I'll take one round of shotgun. That'll be fine. Uh, I'm planning to do a shotgun reload in a little bit. For ammo, just not here. The next chapter. Um, oh, the next chapter. <laughs> oh, the next chapter's fun. <sighs> so, somehow, Daigo's barricade that he built, it didn't do very good... <laughs> The front door's open to Camarocho Hills again, and the zombies got in. Thanks, Daigo. So, we're going to run around. There's going to be a couple of Molotov zombies that, yeah, are going to actually probably hit me a couple of times. Hope I just get past this one. It's fine. This one is a pain. He's just standing there. Thanks. That, that, I don't know where that one was looking either. I think he was locked onto a saggy, actually. That was really nice. Also, don't ask why uh, some of the zombies, as soon as you enter this area, are just stood still like mannequins, pretending to be mannequins. <laughs> they we don't know that. either. <laughs> they reuse that from Yak as a Fool's cutscene for some reason. Nakano Watari. Uh, I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he has lost me two minutes in my Yak as a Fool PB. I don't like that man. <laughs> but by running this way, there's going to be a hermit spawn. I'm hoping that if I run to the right here, it'll go to the right so I don't have to like run past it. That's good enough. That's very much good enough. Uh, we now put Saggy onto attack because she's going to get dragged forward with us in this cutscene. And we're basically, we're also here looking for a Saggy's uh, fellow members of her squad. Unfortunately, they're all zombies. Unfortunately, I have a grenade launcher. So. <laughs> the Molotov zombie you would think is a pain, but actually it aims for a Saggy. So we just let him like throw that and hopefully kill everyone else. One's alive over there, I think. Uh, they're going into really awkward positions. I think one on the left is still alive. See what I should have got at this point. Uh, excuse you? I should have got rapid reload. Oh, yeah, the army zombies. Uh, they can dodge roll. Kind of forgot to mention that. I was going to mention that in the next chapter when it was important, but apparently it's important here. So, right, baby. Hopefully kill her before the backup, unfortunately not. I always hopefully hit the monkey boy because the monkey boy is obviously a pain. How are you not dead? I'm just going to, yeah, do that. <laughs> Sometimes grenade launcher doesn't do any damage. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> sure. Why not? The absolute cursed weaponry in this game. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm going to need that grenade launcher for speed tech in this next chapter, much like Ryuji. Oh, yeah. Also, whilst we were doing that fight, uh, there was somebody watching us from inside of this part of Camarocho Hills. Uh, they didn't bother to help, which, you know, appreciate that. Uh, it is, of course, everyone's favorite, currently zombie infected. Wait for it. Magimagor. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, basically, Majima says everyone went down to Purgatory, including Daigo, etc. So Majima's going to say he'll show us the way, because we don't know how to get to Purgatory from, um, obviously, Camera Hills. This bit ain't fun. So what we're going to do very quickly is put both of them onto attack, especially Majima. Equip my grenade launcher. I don't know about Majima, you can grab, that's fine. So for this bit, Majima is going to go downstairs on his own, despite the fact it'd be a lot quicker if we were to go down there. And he's going to fight those zombies. We've fought way more zombies than that at this point. The game wants us to use this sniper rifle. The sniper rifle has no damage. It's terrible. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use my grenade launcher. Actually, in a decent place. Should get the... Uh, yeah, the ones at the back. Good. And then I'm just going to do this. So I'm using a visual indicator. Magic was actually doing good work here. I'm using a visual indicator for where I want to hit my shots. It's that one zombie on the left there. Oh, there's one at the back as well. That's really bad. I need to hit, like, here. Uh, if that doesn't kill, then I'll probably get the sniper. I think that one that's Majima shot is the last one. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, you'll see that this sniper rifle uh, ain't great. How did you survive a grenade? Okay, that wasn't actually too bad, considering. That can go way worse. Uh, I've had a zombie survive at the back there for like a good 40 seconds. Uh, the nice thing about this bit is we just have to run through. Uh, actually, I wanted the grenade launcher for the next bit as well, thinking about it. Uh, Molotov zombies on the other side of this door just dodge off. Oh, they won't do anything. That That's also nice. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> this bit sucks. <laughs> this whole chapter is just, this bit sucks. Uh, obviously hit the hermit with a grenade launcher. I'm glad it's next to the Diptera. That helps. I'm going to hit the meathead. There's a whole bunch of special infected zombies, as well as obviously army zombies. The army zombies are actually the problem. Uh, we want to make sure they're on attack so that they'll help us out here. The game the, actually uh, lags me there. The army zombies are very tanky as well, so using grenade launcher makes sense, but if you can't clean them all up with the grenade launcher, then shotgun works just fine. Yeah, it's the problem is then dodge rolling, like this one. <laughs> now, the nice thing is putting our allies onto attack. They will actually help us kill some of these zombies. Uh, now, the uh, the zombie, the army zombies actually spawn in that corner over there. That's why I'm taking care of the rest of these uh, enemies first, so I can take out a bunch of these at the same time. These are the zombies that stop spawning first. And then there's going to be two spawn locations they can come from. I'm actually glad that I hit that one because I was aiming at a really bad angle there. Yeah, the, uh, the other two spawn locations, you kind of have to keep like spinning your camera around back and forth just to try and mop up any zombies that come up. Like, this is the first one, just right next to the stairs. And the second one is, well, underneath the truck where they crawl out from. Although sometimes it's just appear from thin air. You're alive. Again, keeping an eye on the kill count to make sure you know zombies are dead. And yeah, as we as we said earlier and just said, the zombies that spawn under these trucks, they can't be killed unless they're like fully out from under the truck. I'm gonna go full hope that yeah, they kill that one whilst I deal with these two. And as you'll see, yep, zombies are just gonna keep spawning. We just have to go back and forth. This is we we had an old route, a very old route, where we actually bought an assault rifle instead of the uh, upgraded shotgun here, which helped for this bit. Obviously, this should be the last one. No, you. Oh yeah, you. this part is very deceiving when it comes to the last zombie. <laughs> oh, Shot thanks, Asagi. <laughs> yeah, I, I messed that up. I'm glad. I'm glad Asagi helped. That's why you put your NPC allies to attack. Uh, they really do get a lot, a lot more aggressive. Uh, so Majima's gonna leave us here. Majima, who is still infected, he has decided that he's gonna try and get the infection out by going to a sauna and sweating it out. It's a very Majima Goro plan, if you ask me. Hey, remember that bit earlier when Majima and Daigo in the sewers? Please don't shoot the aggros, Asagi. Uh, this bit's worse, because there's a lot more special infected. She shot the aggro. That's the music. <laughs> I really, really do not want the aggros in this bit. They are pretty rough. Uh, this uh, this hermit's going to come with us. The monkey boy's going to come with us. Everyone's going to start coming with us. This is where we're going to use the flamethrower. The flamethrower was something we picked up again from the Dead Souls Runners strats, because the flamethrower here is actually really good if you go specific routes with it. And hopefully I don't get any problems here, because this can go very fast or very, very slow. Hey, something my PD went quite slow, actually. So, that hermit on the right will come to me. It's fine. I'd prefer it to be in front of me here, but it's fine. I'll start taking care of the fact first. Hopefully hit these barrels so we can kill some of the zombies behind. We're basically just going to do a loop of this area whilst not getting knocked down by the monkey boys or the hermits. The hermits obviously died to the flame. Oh, don't hit that barrel. The, the, monk, the hermits died to the flamethrower very, very fast because obviously the flame goes through. It's like outer shell casing. Also, going back here is good because these zombies will keep spawning here as well. 
It's kind of funny. We didn't think the flamethrowers were that great at first, but actually they're pretty decent. Like, you think this shotgun here is good, and it is, but, like, you can just keep walking here and just taking care of zombies. They're going to keep spawning in these areas, much like we were discussing earlier in terms, like, you know, like, zombies continually spawning from certain areas. Saggy is not caught up, which is a shame, because usually you want a Saggy to, like, actually help you out here. Yeah, one thing in uh, the subway system that you can't really rely on too much is the uh, good old NPC partners following you and actually helping you in a meaningful way. Sometimes a saggy is better, but um, most of the time Daigo doesn't help and a saggy can get stuck, which is quite annoying, but yeah, it happens. One's not left beside this wall. And you. There's, also an, there's also a nice thing about this game where if there are any zombies still alive around you, there, there are little red markers at the edge of the screen, so if yeah. you've downed any you can find whatever zombie's still alive and just deal with it. Well, 41 isn't that bad, actually. Uh, yeah, that's how I knew there was one zombie on the other side of that wall at the end there. It was like, I knew there weren't any at the end because I'd stayed down there long enough just to kill like all the zombies that would spawn in. So I knew they were around that area somewhere. And seeing the arrow of the street that guy said about was how I figured out, hey, he's actually on the other side of this. I kind of went the long way around. <laughs> Whoops. But yeah. These Tojo Clan members, much like everybody in this series, goes, Oh, you're the fourth chairman, it's him, it's Kazuma Kiryu. So, yeah, they recognize who we are. We're going to go and see the florist, and we're going to get the... We're also going to find Daigo. He's, he's just been chilling here with the florist the entire time. Uh, also, Akiyama's here, who is like, Hey, you want to know where the florist place is? It's just down here. We've been here more times than you, Akiyama. Although, actually, Akiyama in his private time, he probably does stay here quite a bit. Uh... I say this a lot about this chapter. I like this game a lot. This bit sucks. <laughs> um, we said earlier there's going to be a couple of bits of just pointless standing around. Hope you're ready for three minutes of that. Anyway, here's Nakaido again. Uh, but you'll also see in the bottom left picture there's a new character you haven't seen before. Their name is DD. They're actually the person that made the zombie, uh, the zombie infestation thing. Uh, the zombie infestation thing is uh, <clears throat> an aphrodisiac. Uh, I would like to not get rid of my ammo, thanks. I, I don't need health, thanks. So, basically the zombies are smart, and because the quarantine zone has moved over to the top left part of Kamurocho, they figured out how to get through the sewers. So we've got to go down to the sewers and stop them. In that small little bit we ran through with Majima earlier. Um, they're supposed to be like, you know, you're supposed to like hold this off for three minutes. Uh, no. It, there's no, there's no, no thing to hold on to. How do I hit the monkey boy there? That's pretty good. Usually the monkey boy like comes down here and you have to deal with him. But I didn't lose FPS to you. Also, also got some yeah. really cool uh, speed tech coming up after this bit as well. Again, thanks to the Dead Souls runners. Oh yes, because the, the part coming up after this, spoiler alert, it's a boss fight. But it's dealt with in a really cool way. We can actually stun lock the boss. It's become a little bit harder now that we've changed from rifle to shotgun. Uh, we also, when we were using the sniper rifle before, we usually have the sniper rifle in this fight. If this boss gets away from me, it's going to be a problem. Uh, the nice thing is there is a free sniper rifle in this next fight we can get. Uh, ideally, we won't have to use it. If I can get some good shotgun shots, that'd be good. We don't need to kill the zombies here. It's literally just a three minute waiting segment. Um... So just use your pistol. Uh, however, there is going to be a special event every single minute. I have my grenade launcher out. You can probably guess what's going to happen. Oh, hey, it's a hermit. I'm going to take care of that. Again, yeah, nice hitting the uh, nice hitting the monkey boy. You usually don't. Uh, I'll deal with this Nakiyama. The monkey boys actually like really love the first one if we didn't like hit it at the start. They really love going down to that side area behind you. And then hopefully Akiyama just deals with everybody else. And once again, we wait. But yeah, one of, I'd, I'd say the next boss is actually one of the hardest in this run now due to the, the shotgun strats. I hope, I hope I can do it well, because I've only managed to pull it off like two or three times with the shotgun at this point. It's actually I'd pretty still, hard. I still wouldn't say it's uh, hard, hard. It, it, I think it's just a matter of, yeah, timing. But you can still have enough time at the start of the fight to actually get a few shots off. And yep. that should be enough for it to go roost. Um, if, if you guys haven't caught on yet, it's a flying boss. <laughs> Try and guess Always where fun. it's weak spotters, you'll never guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing this game all night, if you haven't guessed it's the glowing red bit yet, you're gonna be surprised. Because, uh, we were surprised by something this week, weren't we? <laughs>
Oh, I definitely was surprised when I found out. <laughs> How did it take and us this long? It took us over four years. Well, actually, I've only been running the game for like two, I think. All right, say it can be like five years, right? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll own up to it. <laughs> you think shooting the glowing red bit would be the first thing we tried in a fight, but apparently for five years, no. <laughs> Uh, I, mean, I mean, to be fair, you know, when you're in the heat of the moment, you're in a really good place. You're about to PB. You don't really think about it. Also, wait, I swear I did try aiming at it before and we actually can't aim at the weak spot straight away. Plus, we also need a little bit of luck and for the boss not to be, like, super aggro. Oh, possibly, yeah. Right, anyway, so before right. all this bit ends, we want to make sure our grenade launcher and our shotgun is reloaded. Then I'm going to concentrate on this bit, so I'm going to leave it to you. That's all fine. Luckily... Waiting section pretty much over at this point. Fantastic. We've fended off the horde. Oh, no, we haven't. Now we have to run through them. That's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, we're not going to waste too much ammo in this point. We can just run past everything. And if the meathead up here is in a good position, which he looks like he is, but the zombies are a bit... <laughs> yeah. <iffy. Ooh. laughs> Yikes. Um... Here is a uh, Basan, the flying prototype, or as a uh, fruit likes to call him, Batman. A very good naming convention. <laughs> Can you guess why? Once again, where is its weak spot? I can't tell where its weak spot is. Please help. Please don't miss. <laughs> yeah. So at the start of the fight, Fruit is going to try and get a few shots off at its weak spot to try and get it to roost a bit early. If it flies away like that, it's not too much of an issue, as long as it's not... Yo, nice! Okay, that was really good, because if he gets away from you again, then you can spend way too long trying to track him down and shoot him in the right spot. Uh, but now that he's roosting, it's just a matter of, oh, we've got all this grenade launcher ammo. What do we do with it? Oh, we stun lock the boss by aiming at his weak spot. Nice. This was and, uh, a strat come up by the Dead Souls difficulty runners, so infinite thanks to them, because this skips such a big part of this fight. If you, if you couldn't tell already, we basically stole most of our strats from the Dead Souls runners. <laughs> I um, should be doing this faster, but I forgot to get a specific upgrade that I should have got a couple of chapters ago. That's all fine. We're still making good progress. Um, and also, stun locking that boss, by the way, uh, stops it from summoning zombies, which during this fight can be a Right pain in the neck. They can just... Oh, yeah. Yeah. They can it's ruin necessary everything. on Dead Souls difficulty. If the zombies spawn on Dead Souls difficulty, it just overruns the fight. Just dead. Nothing you can do. Which actually, again, we have something to... We have to thank the Dead Souls difficulty runners for the next chapter as well, because they found out something fascinating about the game design in this next chapter. Absolutely fascinating. Also, Daigo's here again. <laughs> the Daigo just turns up like, hey, I'm Daigo. So, all right. Hold up, Daigo. But yeah, there's something that's been missing from this game that's, you know, pretty much in every single, you know, third-person shooter, you know? Shabat guy, what do you think what do you think's been missing gameplay-wise from this game so far? Hmm, if I had to guess, I'd say some sort of on-rail shooter section. Oh, <laughs> you would be right! Our on-rail shooter section has speed tech by us trying to not drop the FPS. <laughs> Something that was I a found gold out by a minute. By the way, that was really good. That's that ridiculous, fantastic. but that I was like that. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, something I found out uh, about recently is in this auto scroller section, your goal is to well shoot zombies and stuff while not letting the frames drop too much. But you can kill the zombies on easy by just tapping the button, and that way it doesn't overheat the gun as much, and you can be a lot more accurate. So it's a godsend when you're trying to aim for some of the Molotov zombies that will spawn in a little bit. Because they will drop your frames. And also, explosive barrels, try and shoot them early, because again, <laughs> frame drops. <laughs> yeah. So, fun fact, if you were to do this on Dead Souls difficulty, uh, the truck would be about a quarter dead at this point. Um, the Dead Souls difficulty runners found... Uh, fun fact about this bit... Um, because you can't survive this on Dead Souls difficulty, they figured out the armor of the truck is based on the armor stat that you have on Kiryu at the time. Which is kind of weird. I don't know why Kiryu's armor affects the truck, but it does. That's how the game I works. Wonder, 
And what if he just tears up and puts on the outside of the truck, like, there, there, you'll be safe now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just gets it back afterwards. Uh, please get those barrels. Good. Yeah, those barrels can be tricky to hit from that far away, but uh, you'll, you'll see why it's best to hit them there because uh, of this particular specimen. Something we haven't said, actually. Like, this, this game has amazing music. This game has great music. I do personally well, like this game a lot, but the music is absolutely wonderful. Oh, for sure. And I also do want to say, just on the general note, this game has some of the best sub-stories in the entire Yakuza series. That's my own personal opinion, but... They really are great, just in general, and I would highly recommend, if you play this game, please experience them. Alright, so we get to discuss something wonderful about this game's design. See that timer at the top of the screen? It's tight to the in-game frame rate. <laughs> this is why... Oh, I let him run forward. This is why I'm intentionally not shooting too much, because we all know what happens to this guy if you break his chest. Now you might be wondering, oh, why don't we just kill him? Uh, we can't. Yeah, it's him for the HP. Oh, hello. So basically at this point, we just want to obviously, as we were saying, oh, just tap shot. Now he's going to get closer every so often, which is when obviously we just want to just wait, let him do it. On easy, you can actually take these heads, as you can see, but it creates a dust cloud that slows the game down. Particle effects. Who needs them, right? Yeah. This is why we don't aim for the head or the arm so we don't break more of his armor. But you can see his HP bar is just looping in the bottom right. It'll happen in the next uh, HP bar. To do and during, during these parts too, you may have noticed that there are Molotov zombies that come from the sides. They're annoying, just shoot them once, make them drop their Molotovs. Save the frames. Save this bit has like eight of them. <laughs> Did, but yeah, <laughs> shoot the Molotov zombies, save the frames, save your brain, stop stressing, it's all fine. You know, it's I'm all good. I'm actually surprised at how good my aim is because I cannot describe how hard it is to aim any weapon in this video game. If you just miss these barrels, just take the hit. <laughs> like, it, it's so hard to actually aim guns in this game. The sensitivity is absurd. I know what you mean. Like, for some reason, this turret gun seems to be way more accurate and more pleasing to aim than, let's say, a shotgun, a sniper. It's just ridiculous. I had, to, I had to get a bit close there to see those barrels. So now we do want to shoot him. Despite the fact he still has infinite HP, he can actually stop the truck and obviously cost his time. So obviously we're going to be firing a little bit faster at points. Hopefully just hitting that weak spot a couple of times before he gets close. I'm doing a bad job. You can see kind of like it's moving up and down as he's obviously running by. That's why I'm trying to like keep it at a specific angle that I know what it's going to be when it like goes down. If we hit us here, it's fine because we're just going down here. So for this bit, for speed tech, very specifically, don't shoot the guy. We're going to hope that he just runs at us. If he runs at us, it actually makes this bit a lot easier because now we can kill the guy. But if he runs towards us, it makes him a lot easier to kill. So hopefully... The lad. Can't kill him whilst we're talking. So oh, yeah, awesome. we can awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, we cannot kill him in one full burst, sadly, so we do have to wait a little bit. Also helps the frame rate again. Yeah, and the Molotov zombies have made their grand return, um, so you've got to be mindful about them as well. And walk forward. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. No, I'd say that's a pretty solid section, to be honest. All right. So, that is the end of the last chapter of Kiryu's part, which means we're on to one final bit. Oh boy. Here we go. It is time for the finale. So, as we said earlier, uh, we don't get the reason as to why Ryuji now has, you know, a minigun for an arm, but we do get to meet the guy that gave it to him. So, we've gone to this gunsmith at the, uh, at the, uh, the behest of Daigo to get ourselves... A really strong weapon. Uh, Street Bad Guy said about it earlier, it's the anti-material rifle. Uh, fun fact for New Game Plus, uh, the anti-material rifle is one of the best uh, actual weapons for piercing ability in this game. It's kind of like a souped-up uh, sniper rifle, obviously, but does really, really good damage like 
everything. So when you upgrade everyone's weapons in this game, uh, as you saw already with the shotgun, uh, it actually changes the look of them. Kiryu's final anti-material rifle has a blue heat effect on the end to indicate like the the heat, like the the heat effect, the flame stuff from like you know usual Yakuza stuff, uh, the heat and EX stuff is like infused into this weapon. That natively drops your FPS by about five. <laughs> this is a video game. <laughs> Love this video game. <laughs> this video game's great. <laughs> so Majima has figured out a way to get rid of the zombie infection. He's gonna go to the sauna. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm sure that's going to work. Uh, but that's that's our new rifle. Uh, this rifle is very, very good for every single boss from this point onwards. Hello, Ryuji. So we're gonna get the usual point of no return. It's like, are you sure you're ready? Make a mental note that this is the point of no return. Because <clears throat> the game's definitely going to give us another one later on, way past the point where we can, you know, come backwards. <laughs> don't know why. If I don't get hit by Molotovs, I did. It's fine. Molotov zombies can just keep you busy here. Again, I'm going to reload my grain launch mission past them. Because I do not like trying to, like, wait on that bit. Shotgun's reloaded. That's good. I just got the other Molotov zombie without Molotov, so I'm actually okay with that. Uh, because if the anti-material rifle doesn't start with that much ammo, it's fine. When I get to here, Ryuji gets onto attack. Oh, it's a bad spawn. Yeah. Okay, that's why we have the anti-material rifle out there, just in case. They can spawn from the uh, the Akushimaru that's there. Alright, this bit. So, we have to cut out all the zombies in front of the Millennium Tower. Once again, a Yakuza game is ending at the Millennium Tower. Act surprised. So... The grain launch is really good here. There's a bunch of special infected. There's also something else here that's really good. You've seen it a couple times this run already. Do not run towards me, monkey boy. Good. <laughs> I don't like that monkey boy at the start here because he can actually like really mess you up. So I'm just going to take care of him. What? All right. He'll, he'll run to me. At least I hope he'll run to me. I was going to say, using a grenade launcher around on a monkey boy, that seems a bit excessive just for him. <laughs> Well, he kind no. of deserves it. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> uh, ideally, I'd like to hit the two meatheads as well, because they'll go down to one HP. Uh, you know what? I'm going to use it early to hope the Dipteras actually come over, because this isn't a great start. Uh, Ryuji's being caught by one of the monkey boys. But yeah, the tank's still here, by the way. So, I'm going to get in the tank. I'm going to fire one shot. Because, thankfully, one of the spawn points is right here. Next to this giant explosive truck. You're alive. You can see. Good. The other one is probably alive as well. Oh, interesting. All right, Ryuji, good job. So the nice thing about doing that as well is Ryuji's now out of that predicament. I think one might be alive. I'm just going to be careful of that. Uh, okay. Where, where are you going? Two are alive. Okay, so you're gone. Once we deal with this zombie, that should be everyone around here. And now we just have to deal with the rest of these. Again, the meat head will go down to one hit. They take way less damage when it's not a headshot, but again, in when you have like upgraded weapons, they do take a decent amount of damage. Especially to certain weapons. Again, the anti-material rifles, shotguns, a cutie girl figure in this bit. Sure, I can't use that anymore. One zombie is alive to the right. It's you. And yeah, now we're just clearing up all the zombies. One behind me. Still the monkey boy to my right. I think that's the one from earlier. Hey, thanks for not grabbing me. I appreciate that. JJ. <laughs> oh, uh, you can also something that we do in Dead Souls difficulty is we actually we have uh, the kick on circle that we did in the tutorial. That's very good for stopping these monkey boys. I don't feel like this has gone too great. You should be the last ones. Oh, I still kick the monkey boys and easy just because. Well, they deserve it, and plus they are very annoying. Yeah, if they grab you, it's pretty much just. There goes a lot of time. But yeah, it's actually, this is a really cool finale. It's just like, it's just Kiryu and Ryuji who, you know, have beef with each other, just teaming up. Also, Big Brains, which I, I didn't realize you could do this, but you can just ignore these enemies. Oh. I didn't know you could do that until Rube actually did it in one of his runs. I was like, wait, you can do that? Pretty dumb, but I love it. And the stupid thing is, if you look up at the uh, stairs where they are, you can usually just see him just stuck at the top sometimes. It's quite funny. Yeah. Also, the upgraded Pathfinder takes out these fatties at close range in one hit, which is really, really nice. Really, really nice. All right. We're now into the into the meat of our final set piece. So there's oh going to be a couple boy. of floors. With, you might recognize these floors from earlier. Uh, I'm going to get the anti-material right if we're out for clearing a path. There is this aggro here. 
Okay, you might think that's a bit overkill for him. It's not. There's multiple zombies in this room, which is a pain because you have to get past them. And then these ones that can lock you into a corner for good. Uh, that wasn't the greatest, but I'm past them at least. Excuse you. Yeah, that's that door is also a spawn. Uh, camera, please don't focus on the crybaby. Thank you. Also, very good not hitting the uh, the fatties there because they can just lose your... Really? You're not usually that aggressive. How dare you? Get out of here. <laughs> I was not going to shoot for once. I could just run. No, I, no, no, not you. No. <laughs> you grabbed me once already. I've had enough of you. <laughs> A swift shot to the face. That'll do it. <laughs> oh, hey, so the first of two protect Ryuji parts. I don't actually think you can fail these, even if you let the zombies hit Ryuji. I might be wrong. Uh, yeah, it's going to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not much to say other than this. Just a time section while Ryuji closes the shutter so the zombies don't keep coming after us. Yeah. <laughs> Occasionally you get ones that try and crawl through the shutter as it's closing and they're very annoying to deal with until they finish the animation and stand up because you can't really shoot them just like the uh, truck spawning zombies from earlier. Yeah. It's also, obviously, as you can see there, a very good time to reload your guns because you're going to need to have fully reloaded guns. I'm going to be very upset if Hayashi does the thing. <laughs> this is a it's decent hard. run. If I actually does the thing, I'm going to be very upset. It's a decent run. Uh, the All the zombies can block this doorway. The doorway is obviously the cutscene trigger, so we just like get them out of the way there. You use the anti-material rifle, but I kind of need that ammo for the next part. If, the thing, <laughs> if the thing happens after Hayashi, I'll be sad. I will be as well. I'll be very upset. So, bunch of Majimas, boys. Uh, we need to get into this safe, which is a bit unfortunate because we actually know the code for the safe. It's 3538. The problem is we need to convince the game that we have gone to get the code. Because here's the thing, you can fail putting in the code. If you fail it three times, Ryuji just busts the safe open. So it would have been nice if we had the option to do that, but unfortunately not. Uh, I want the anti-material rifle for this next part, just in case that hermit gets in the way. Which you think I want the grenade launcher for? No. There's a dip terror as well. Are you joking? Okay, nice. <laughs> right? I, I've never seen him in the doorway there. And a zombie just punched the table at me. That's probably the worst hermit in this finale. Probably yeah. the entire game, actually. Yeah. Puff maker for these zombies. Very nice. A density polymer. Okay. You won't need that. Alright, so. Nisha's notebook is in the back here, which gives us a puzzle for the code to the safe. <laughs> it, is, it is a Majima special in terms of puzzles. Uh, I'm going to get some anti-material. Uh, the grenade, actually, I want a little bit of grenade. I'm not going to lie, I think a bit of grenade for the end would be pretty good. I shouldn't have to do any more. Uh, I'll keep the healing item just in case. Had some problems sometimes. All right, back we go. <laughs> back we go through that room with a hermit again. Hopefully not in the way this time. Also, he can knock the furniture towards you as well, which is a shame. Kind of glad you're gone. Oh, what is this doorway? <laughs> well, we're redecorating the office. Why is the desk in the door? Oh, I've had it once before where uh, Kiryu was stuck in the middle of a sofa while trying to get through that doorway, and it was just... I couldn't escape. Yeah. It was pain. I, I can believe that. Right, so despite the fact that you can break the safe open, it's actually a little faster just to do the safe. So, 3538. Oops, that's the wrong way. I'm in. Uh, if you open the safe, you do get a reward. You get a couple of healing items. Uh, again, we've got a couple of healing items of our own, so I'll just put those away. Cool. So, they are saying that there is a really nasty zombie above us. It's actually the zombie that is the ground zero for all of the, all of the infected zombies in this game. It is the, the one that began biting everybody, which Ryuji recognized as one of his old lieutenants, Hayashi. If you Yakuza 1 and 2, you'll recognize that name. He is a pain in pretty much most speedruns we do. Oh yeah, the hermit despawns there. I was like, where is the hermit? No, he despawns there, it's fine. <laughs> uh, it's time for the anti-material rifle. This is good ammo for this boss, but I'm going to need a bit more for after. All right. I would... Here we go. I'm going to leave this to you again. That's that's fine. I mean, I am going to preface this boss fight by saying there is a possibility <laughs> after this fight 
for the console to hard lock. And why it does that is because there is a cutscene after that doesn't usually load the audio at the same time, I think. I, I can't remember the specifics. But if the uh, cutscene doesn't show up but the audio plays, your console soft locks and then hard locks, meaning your run's dead. And to throw dirt in your face, the nearest save point is right after this fight. So, you know, good luck. Uh, but as you can, as you can see... <laughs> He's giving me Hi problems today. Hayashi is a very acrobatic, uh, annoying nuisance. Good, um, I skipped the tongue attack, jeez. <laughs> the tongue attack is very annoying, but as long as you can skip that, that's the main thing. Now he's got grenades, he's going to start flipping about, maybe hanging from the roof and throwing grenades at you. It's not awful, but if he does that to Ryuji, it's not bad because it keeps him in place and you can get off a few shots with the anti-material rifle. Uh, if you're lucky, you can hit him in the weak spot, which, surprise, surprise, does a lot of damage. Um, coming up into one of the future phases, I can't remember if it's this one or the one after. I think it's this one. Uh, he can jump on top of Ryuji uh, and actually rip off his Gatling gun arm. Yeah. Uh, and he'll start firing at you. Uh-oh. Yeah? Oh, I'm surprised that didn't hit me. That I'm was a, a really rough Hayashi fight. Most of my shots are missing. Uh, for those who are wondering, so I actually think we've explained the checks. We haven't used this weapon. Uh, I'm backstepping to get rid of the animation for like putting a shell into the actual rifle. Yeah, you don't really use it too often in the run. It's mainly during the finale, and I think you can use it during Akiyama's part two. Yeah, uh, when we use the sniper rifle. Yeah, uh, okay, but otherwise, it, it's fine. Oh yeah, here is a. Uh, Ryuji getting his Gatling gun arm ripped off. As you do. This is actually yeah. very good because usually Hayashi will focus on Ryuji and shoot him. Uh, he's focusing me, but I need to reload him, so it's not too bad. Because if he focuses on Ryuji, we just can shoot him very quickly and easily. Uh, we don't want to hit his weak spot here because he will drop the actual Gatling gun, and we actually kind of want him just to keep it because otherwise we'll see an extra cutscene. Hey, bud. I actually wonder about getting up close to the shotgun here. I don't think I've ever tested it. That sounds like a possible theory that I'm happy to test at some point. Because I feel like the shotgun here could be good while he's in this phase. Yeah. Right, but then again, out. yeah. All right. Place your bets. Is the game going to crash? Or is it going to continue? So we're basically trying to listen out if the audio still plays, but there's no visual. That's that's what we're that's the that's the tell, unfortunately. Yep, black screen means you're out of luck, unfortunately. Let's find out. This one's fine, it's the next one. Oh, we're good. Ooh, okay, I haven't, good. I haven't had it in a while, actually. This is kind of nice. I haven't actually either. Mm. Yeah. I, I do think, and again, I have nothing I have nothing that actually has any evidence about this. I feel like the game has a memory leak, because we always get it around the same time every single run, and ever since we've saved like 10 minutes in this run, we've never actually gotten it. So I wonder. Uh, I actually, mean, we saved like we... 20 minutes, I should say. <laughs> yeah, um, when we change the SSD, some of us can still get the crash, but it seems to happen less frequently, so I guess that's a added benefit. Which isn't awful. Anyway, these random zombies come in, just kill them. Yeah. Easy. Good fight. <laughs> Very good fight. We're basically getting near the end of the run. Uh, we, just basically, uh, we just basically have a boss rush left. And an annoying walking section, I suppose. Uh, the, ag the aggros are going to mess me up, aren't they? <laughs> no, Every I mean... time. I mean, technically, you could roll through them if they're being a pain, because there's enough room for them. Yeah, I'm just going to use the anti-material rifle. All trusted method. <laughs> I mean, I mean, fair. <laughs> just the gun that gets everything out of the way. Yeah, I'm going to use that. <laughs> uh, the ammo should be fine, uh, leaving the high... Is he there crawling in? That's the street bad guy said earlier. I'm going to kill the girl for the drop. Nice. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, you're Basically, this whole run boils down to 
Hmm, how to deal with problem. Shotgun. Anti-material rifle. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, stock alarm sound. We got to go turn off the alarm because everyone's going to be really aggro here. Even all the normal zombies, they will stop me. That's why I'm shooting them there. Uh, go around here and then hopefully get you out of the way. You're actually now more in the way, which is unfortunate. Although I'm now being pushed through the door, which isn't the worst thing. Please excuse me. Thank you. Again, I'd rather not shoot so that I don't lose my movement speed with the sprint the shot. These two aggros will aggro if you touch them, which I'm surprised they weren't there. Go around the zombies here because there's a like invisible spawn point in the middle. And the zombies here. If you're wondering why I'm not reloading, it's for movement speed and also because I need to make one shot here anyway to turn off the alarm. Because why, why wouldn't we shoot the alarm? Also, you shoot through Ryuji to hit the alarm. Don't worry about it. You can take it. <laughs> Reload for this room because there is a spawn in the door. Good shot. And our last set of ammo, which I should only need the anti-material at this point. So I'm going to make sure I have enough. I'm going to take one more. Good. Okay. Last few bosses. So we need a little bit of luck. We're gonna need. Uh, we're gonna need them to focus on Ryuji. Really focus on Ryuji. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. This is Kinro and Ginro, because gold and silver, you'll understand when you see them. One of them is gold and one of them is silver. Uh, Ryuji gets to be on attack, and they're both running away, which is really weird. We are hoping this guy jumps on Ryuji whilst we do the backstepping and lower the camera, because this room, when looking down the very end, drains your FPS. He's jumping at me. Yeah, that's a shame. I was trying to move, but the FPS loaded so much I couldn't actually do anything. That's fine. He grabbed Ryuji. This is what we want. Because he's just going to grab Ryuji, and we're just going to keep shooting. Now, this boss has a very, very, very special attack or the feature where they will actually start healing when their HP bars get, like, too far away from each other. Also, one of them creates fire, which, as you've probably already seen from the video game, f ow, fire makes things slow. So I prefer them not to do that. He's going to jump me. Yep. This is not other... going ideal right now. The other uh, creates like an oily substance too, which can trip you up. Down there. Which is just uh, a nuisance, really. But you know, the main strategy here is just try and shoot them. Try to minimize your reloads. If they jump at you and you can get a heat snipe off, great. That that will give you a little bit of time to hit their weak spot. But again, it's like that arrow her backies before. It it's rarely it's rarely ever happening and it's honestly a very tight window again so it's not always reliable and as you can see they're healing here kinro is uh, going on to ginro and uh just Oop. making sure they're blood brothers where are they going hello what are you doing <laughs> where actually are you going classic ai <laughs> oh you're after me that's where you're going I didn't actually connect. Again, the downside is I'm looking towards the end of the room that likes to lag us. You're just dying, so I'm gonna heal him here. This is usually the only spot you actually like heal. Uh I don't think I can kill I can kill Ginro now with or Kinro now without the heal. It's not too bad. One of them should stop with Ruji though. Hi. He's going after me. That's fine, because I can kill him. Uh, okay. Yes, this game is exclusive to PS3. Un unfortunately, no uh, remakes, remasters, or anything have ever been released. Which is a shame. Day. I do actually like this game. I, I do hope it does get the treatment one day. Uh, this is good, because I get to go into the next fight with a bit of ammo in this gun. So I can hopefully go fast the first phase of this next fight. Oh, I hope I can get Nikaido skip. It's really hard. We've only managed it like a couple of times over the years in practice for this today. I, we, we managed it yesterday. And ironically enough, I think I figured out a piece of the puzzle yesterday. It's really hard. We have to do like a precise amount of damage to push through a specific like HP threshold. So we have to also hope, I believe, that he is busy like doing an attack. So this is kind of rough and I don't think I'm going to get it because I haven't fully figured it out yet. But essentially, you can skip a phase of this boss. This boss actually has something really cool going for him, as you'll see. Uh, he's also using blood bullets. This is actually fine, because I can get him from here. Hey, do me a favor, Luigi. Go attack. Nice. He's standing in the same place, so I can just shoot. Oh, yeah. By the way, um, Nikita is a, a zombie now. Don't worry about it. 
that I got the time to reload before phase change. All right, this is a very cool but also disgusting phase. This is actually actually one of Dead Souls' like really cool original thoughts. And it kind of becomes blood. Uh, <laughs> spawns blood zombies. Once again, play guess where the weak spot is. You'll you'll never guess. <laughs> Man, I might now be that floating heart. So there are 10 spots he can spawn in. So I need to use audio to figure out where he is. And so he's gonna... Can... Oh. oh, he came beside me? Hi. Ooh, that's nice. If, I if you're lucky, shots. you can go for a couple of shots before like he disappears, but it can be a pain oh, sometimes. He's going to try and heal off me. Oh, he actually grabbed me. It's unfortunate. If he grabbed Ryuji, I could have set up for Nikai. Just, did he just Matrix dodge my shot? Excuse you? Oh. I'm going to push him into the blood bullet if I'm not careful. Yeah. He needed a bit more damage, but if I did that normal shot anyway, it would have done that much damage. So, unfortunately, we now have to sit through this so we don't get to skip the uh, the second version of this. The Nikaido skip is basically skipping this for the second time. Uh, we managed it the other day, but unfortunately not here. Unfortunately not here. Once again, we now have to shoot the heart. And the problem is he has to go back to his original phase. He's left. He's over here. It should oh, be fine, though, because I think it's only one be... more shot, isn't it? Oh, you have to shoot him one more time. Oh, uh, yeah. Could not be Damn. in our worst place. Shame. Shame. Oh, well. Final boss, which uh, <clears throat> we figured out <laughs> has a weak spot. <laughs> You'll never guess where the weak spot is. It took us a couple of years. <laughs> uh, this is Nikaido still, by the way. Uh, don't ask. He, man, <laughs> man. Hey, he, don't worry he about it. <laughs> he worked out. This is the Okazuchi. This is the final boss. Uh, there's going to be a QT that will tell you is when time is. I'm not reloaded, which is a shame, so I'm going to try and get one shot off. I missed the weak spot. Would you believe it's the glowing red eyes? Wow, what a surprise. Oh, I might miss which twice. is weird, because like most of the other bosses in the game also have glowing red eyes, but they, they're not as prominent. And obviously they've got bigger weak spots around their bodies. But here, the final boss, literally staring at you dead with weak spots. And you're like... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to backstep and just shoot his torso. That seems like a smart move. This uh, is where it's not really possible to hit the weak spot anymore because he's now about to start punching me. <laughs> he was very passive there. That was really nice. There is also like a nice little safe spot to the left as well um, while he's doing this kind of phase. Uh, if you're not going for the weak spot in the Ow. eye, which you should be, but back when we were aiming at the torso, there's like a little safe spot where you stand, you do the back step, you shoot his torso. Um, if he does a sweeping attack, then you can roll through his arm while he does it. It's quite nice. It's time for the Resident Evil moment. <laughs> Here comes the saggy with one that's clearly obviously a rocket launcher to end this fight. But wait. It's actually not a rocket launcher, it's just grenades. That's disappointing. Cool. <laughs> uh, he's gonna get one more attack off here, so I'd have to be a bit careful. Not to die. Hopefully he goes for the swing on the right hand side, that's why I moved to the right. Oh, you are gonna do that. Okay, so as we said, say slots to the left. <laughs> well, <laughs> the back here, I kind of forgot that was a thing. He was like, how dare you? <laughs> Oh. Alright, actually this time the Resident Evil moment. <laughs> uh, this is actually a reward for finishing the game on Dead Souls difficulty. Alright, time is going to be coming up not on this next shot, but the QT after this next shot. If it doesn't take two, sometimes it glitches and takes two. Thank God. <laughs> and time is coming up on this QTE, and... Time. 
GG. It's ending. <laughs> this video game. <laughs> uh, this is I a mean, good when have you game. ever seen a monster like stop a <laughs> missile from hitting its own chest with its own rib cage? Come on. Yup. So, hopefully, we still have permission to show you uh, two things. We're going to first show you Majima in the sauna because Majima is uh, he's come here to try and get the zombie infection out. We'll get to show you one of the actual, like, cleverest twists this game has ever done. And I'm surprised I've never seen this in any other kind of horror trope. Like, maybe there is, like, horror movies out there that have done this as a twist. But don't forget, Majima got bit earlier in the game. So he came to the sauna to sweat out the bite. We've got one thing after the show. I'm going to have to <laughs> reopen the game to make it go faster. But where's the credits take ages? Zombie Majima. Oh, no. <laughs> ない。ゾンビやないで。やっぱ聞くのかぶるちゃんのさんだわ。よ、でもそのめ。ええ。そうやった。わしが欲しいやったわ。<笑> So how did Majima not actually get infected when bitten by a zombie earlier? This is why. There's the zombie biting him. Here's the thing about this zombie. You don't see this in, obviously in the original cutscene. This is obviously added here. It's an old man zombie. He ain't got any teeth. <laughs> He's literally just wearing dentures. That's such a good twist. That's such a good twist. I can't believe, like, never seen that in anything ever. Because Majima thinks the sauna got the uh, the zombie the zombie out, uh, but I'm gonna fire up the game because there's one more thing to show off with uh, good old Goro Majima. This skips the unskippable end credits, which is funnily enough the end credits are the only place that you get to see the only tiny little bit of localized Kenzan. <laughs> they Because they do this thing where, because I think at one point, uh, this was supposed to be the last game, so they were kind of, you know, here's shots from all the other games, OG1, OG2, and then Kenzan, because Kenzan came between OG2 and 3. So that's that's the only bit of Kenzan you'll ever get. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, one more thing to show off real quick, and it's uh, it's very quick to get to, thankfully. This, this loading of the game used to take, like, I kid you not, like two to three minutes if you're on a base PS4 and a hard drive. <laughs> Thank you. Again, Street sorry, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you're causing me to get, like, way more soft locks in OG2. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> that'll, that'll make your race exciting. Let, let's just yeah, say that. Yeah. <laughs> It'll end it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to sign into PSN, you know. Uh, so we're going to go Premium Adventure. Uh, we're just going to go from any kind of state. Because thankfully, we start in the Gunsmith's location, uh, which is all the way down here. Uh, you can pick as any of the characters, go to any of the side content. But one of the things you get with this game <laughs> is some wonderful different outfits. Uh, we're not looking at Harakas, they're abhorrent and bad. But Kiryu, he has normal Okinawa shirt Kiryu, Dragon Mask Kiryu, and of course, 4th of July Kiryu. Because, of course, Akiyama has Homeless Akiyama, Disco Man Akiyama, and you might recognize this model if you played Yak Zero. That is indeed Bacchus, because Bacchus' model was based on his. Majima has Normal Majima, Suit Majima from Free, Shirtless Majima, and, of course, Pirate Majima. And then Ryuji has himself Takayaki Ryuji, Kenzan Ryuji, which is weird because Ryuji wasn't in Kenzan, and Rambo Ryuji. So, let's make Majima a pirate and go do a thing real quick, shall we? Because thankfully, it's right outside. If this was if this was the new engine, we'd have to go to Nakamichi, but it's right outside. Uh, doesn't matter what time of day, we're going to go do some karaoke. Because, much like the other Yakuza games, this game has some unique karaoke, and Majima's karaoke in this game, it's not 24 Hour Cinderella. The song that Majima sings in this, and we get a reward for completing the game, uh, the song that Majima sings in this is actually only sung by one other person in this series, and that's Haruka. Majima's version is very different in tempo, so I hope you enjoy. Because this is, this is phenomenal, this is fantastic. <laughs> I can't sing this one, if you have any expectations of that, it's not happening. <laughs> Ha <laughs> 
It's just something about Majim in a pirate outfit. <laughs> And I think that's a perfect encapsulation of everything Yakuza Dead Souls. <laughs> oh, I see the giraffe actually gave me a good favor today. Yesterday he gave me a 190 when everything else was 200. I don't like that giraffe. <laughs> We're not friends. But yeah, that was Yakuza Dead Souls. Um, yeah, Street Bad Guy, you want to do your outro? Uh, I, I'm sure I'll be back at some point for other janky uh, horror <laughs> games, but... Uh, Speedrun, play, do Eva, play Dead Souls. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, again, I'd like to do some thanks for once again the um, the Dead Souls difficulty runners, uh, Pandemonium and Meta, who with them doing work on the Dead Souls difficulty helped just open the any percent up like completely uh, and get us some really really clever ideas, which is really really nice. Um, I'd like to thank Dices for having us on uh, and also putting on obviously this show that just allows a lot of people to just show off these wonderful horror games that you may never have heard of. I know I've found a couple of horror games from like this show that I've actually really enjoyed playing myself because of that. And yeah, I'd also like to obviously just chat out the Speedrun Discord. You ever want to speedrun a Yakuza game? Loads of people will help you out. Uh, any of the people who actually like run the individual games as well are happy to help. Um, and I will see you all in two days' time when actually I'm going to be on another Hotfix show uh, racing Yakuza 2 versus Yakuza 3 with Tapioca. So look forward to that. So it's a yak as a week this week. <laughs> Apparently, I uh, definitely uh, cheers to that, and thank you to both for doing the uh, the excellent run here of Dead Souls. Uh, before oh, thank you, you very go much. though, um, Froob, if anyone wanted to find you on Twitch or anywhere else, where can they find you? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Froob. That's that's just it. I speed run yak games. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's definitely good stuff, and it was fun being able to show off a game that's a little bit, uh, one might say, not the exact nor what you expect from a traditional horror game, but I kind of like whenever uh, certain games want to be horror games that they're not quite horror games. It's neat. Yeah, yeah and this game actually has some good ideas. It's just execution, a little rough in places. All right. I do want to say thank you once again for doing the run, and thank you everyone for watching. Uh, this is really the only run of the night. Uh, it was definitely much longer of a run, so uh, given the uh, the three-hour estimate, uh, this has pretty much been the show for tonight. I do hope that you enjoyed this episode of Speedruns from the Crypt. We'll be back in a couple of weeks uh, with more fun horror games for you. Uh, until then, I've been your host, Dick Dysis. Uh, I do uh, a lot of the planning for these shows. I also run a lot of horror games in my own time, so I'm somewhere around here. You can find my name somewhere on the screen. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this show. We're going to be uh, rating someone in the horror community. Uh, I do hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and or night, and thank you all for watching. <laughs>